floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning. The City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for uh, May 10th, 2022 is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature last year. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings until July 15, 2022. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure the hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. Board members, applicants and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person in, uh, meetings, comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. In order of com the order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting, as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project that is those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to give comments on an appeal, please click the raise hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand. You must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Again, press star nine to raise and lower your hand and press star six to unmute yourself if you are attending this meeting um, by telephone. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first, and then can provide the comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Do not raise your hand before the relevant address is called, or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. Just a reminder, this is being conducted as a regular meeting. So when the board is taking testimony or is in discussion, please refrain from interrupting. These instructions will be repeated throughout the hearing. I will now take a roll call of board members. Um, Mr. Fortune. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, Mr. Ruggiero. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Ehrlich. Here. Ms. Dong. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Robinson. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Panato. <coughs> Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, um, Mr. Hampton from BPDA. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, and is Mr. D'Amico on from BTD? Okay. 
Um, Mr. Fortune, let's let's get started. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Uh, this the first order of business is the approval of the hearing minutes of April fifth of two thousand twenty-two. We need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> On the first extension, calling DOA 916 14 Snow Street. Name and address for the record, please. Is Mr. Fung on? Is my Fung on? I'll come back to him. I'll come back to Mr. I'll come back to the first one. Uh, they're going to call the next two cases, calling DOA 919 609 25 to 37 Frankfurt Street. There is a companion case, DOA 919 610 120 Gubb Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Eckel with Grego and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Thank you, Mr. Eckel. In regards to 25 37 Frankfurt Street, and 120 Gov Street. This was 2537 Frankfurt. The board originally granted this relief on June 14th of 2019, and it granted the first extension of relief until June 14th of 2022. However, that extension was unnecessary. Withholding the original grant of relief remains valid until September 19th of 2022. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that the relief remains valid until that date. The applicant now also requests an additional extension until September 19th of 2023. 20, I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines that it is appropriate under the circumstances. Taking into account, this would only be the applicant's first necessary extension. Madam Chair, the, the same uh, purpose is 120 Gov Street. Uh, would you like me to read that into the record or, or is that fine? Are the dates exactly the same? The dates are exactly the same. Okay, so we've read both into the record. May I have a motion, please? Uh, motion to ex uh, grant an extension through September 19th, 2023, and that includes all applicable tolling. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank calling, you. The next, calling the next case for extension, calling DOA 486 152 270 Dorchester Avenue. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston. Thank you, Mr. Lacasse. This is in regards to 270 Dorchester Avenue. The board originally granted this relief on July 14th of 2017. The board then granted the first extension of relief until July 14th of 2020. Tolling applies to this extension. With tolling, the first extension remained valid until October 19th of 2021. In the intervening time, the board granted a second and third extension that were unnecessary. However, the board's most recent ex extension extended the relief beyond the told expiration date. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that this extension encompassed all applicable tolling. The applicant now requests an additional one year extension until July 14th of 2023. I recommend that the board grant this extension if it determines it's appropriate under the circumstances taking into account that it would only be the applicant's third necessary extension. Um, may I have a motion, please? Um, Mr. Fortune, what was that date again? Um, Mr. Seven. Zero, that date would be an additional one year extension until July 14th of 2023. I'll make a motion to extend um, until July 14th, 2023, and that includes all applicable tolling, and hopefully this project gets off the ground. Yes, it, it didn't blow past this, Mr. Lacasse, that this is the third one, so we expect that uh, we will not see you in relation to this project. We're in the final stages of design review at BPDA, and I'm happy to report that the new developer is eager to get started. Excellent. May I have a second, please? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Madam Ambassador, is anybody from Snow Street on? 14 Snow. Let me check. I didn't see my on earlier. Uh, hmm. Madam Chief. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me just make sure. That, uh, Joseph, are you here for this case, for that proposal? 
Snow Street. I see your hand is raised. All right, Joseph, are you here for this case? I think we might be all set. I'm sorry. Madam Chair, what would you like to do? Um, let's go ahead and please rely on the office. We will rely on the office to get the message to the applicant. So do you want me to call it to the record? Yes, please. To... Okay. Yeah. For the record, calling DOA 916-151-14 Snow Street. The board through the guidance 14 Snow Street, the board originally granted this relief on April 12th of 2019, and it granted the first extension of relief until April 12th of 2022. However, that extension was unnecessary. Withholding the original grant of relief remains valid until July 18th of 2022. I recommend that the board confirm for the record that the relief remains valid until that date. The applicant now also requests an additional extension until April 12th of 2023. I recommend that the board grant that additional extension if it determines that it's appropriate under the circumstances, taking into account that this would only be the applicant's first necessary extension. Motion, please. I'll make a motion to extend till April 12th, 2023, and that includes all applicable tolling. Oh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. On the first case for GCOD, case BOA 1305679, 1 Otis Place. This is a complete interior gut remodel, rebuilding, existing windows to be restored, new elevator. The violations, Article 32, Section 4. This is G-Card applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Kevin Goggin, 400 Atlantic Avenue. The business address on behalf of the applicant. Okay, um, are these new units? What are they? Uh, yes, ma'am. So this will be a, uh, it's a redo of a, a seven unit residential building that'll be combined into a primary residence with an additional garden level unit. Okay. Uh, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good, no questions on the scope. Okay, um, may I hear from Mr. Simonella? Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Thank you, may I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, we also have those letters. Thank motion. you, may, may I have a motion? Move. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Calling the next case, calling DOA 130 7773 397 Commonwealth Avenue. This is a change of art from a dormitory lodging house to six dwelling units. The violations Article 32, Section 4, the G card applicability. Name and address for the record, please. My name is James Green. I'm attorney at Ruben and Rudman. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the applicant for the property, I believe, also. Our engineer is uh, available. Thank you. Um, how are the plans, um, Mr. Robinson? Plans are good, no questions from me. Are these micro units by any chance? Do you know? Uh, not at all, Madam Chair. These are uh, substantial large units. This was a, uh, a dormitory for young women attending colleges. This was a private dormitory operated by a Catholic order. Consoled my client, uh, doing a complete rehab of this okay. building, Thank all you. zoning compliant. Thank you. Um, Mr. Simonelli? Members of the board, Kristen Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Madam Chair, we have those letters as well. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Following the next case, calling VOA 131 8116 146 Commonwealth Avenue. It's a complete partial gut renovation to a single family townhouse to include new, map, new mechanicals, new finishes, and change art from a dormitory to a single family. The violation of Article 32, Section 5, this is G card applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, members of the board. My name is David Linhart with Goulston and Stores. 400 Atlantic Ave. And uh, this this project has, has been read into the record uh, is a rehabilitation for single family use. Thank you. Uh, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good, uh, no questions. Mr. Simonelli? Members of the board, Kristen Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Yeah. 
We have those letters as well, Madam Chair. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I'm going to call the 930 hearings for any deferrals or withdrawals. If you give me the address first, please. So this is 930 only, deferrals or withdrawals. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, yes. This is Mike Ross. The address is 535 Washington Street. Thank you, Mr. Ross. For the record, calling VOA 117 3599 to 537B Washington Street. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, Mr. Secretary, um, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Mike Ross, attorney at Prince Lobel, One International Place. Um, we uh, made some uh, late changes, uh, minor modifications uh, to the to the plans, <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately, the rule is you need to get those in within two weeks of the uh, hearing, uh, so that the plans examiner has time to review and that your board architect has time to review, even if it's the most minor of changes, as is the case here. And because we didn't, uh, weren't able to do that, uh, we, we are requesting a deferral to uh, allow the, the board and staff time to review uh, said documents. May I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please? You'll have a date of July 12th at 1130. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the 930 cases? Hearing none, I'll call the first case, calling DOA 128 3596 101 Saratoga Street. This is to combine two lots into, into a newly created single lot to be 1,992 square feet, a change of arcs from commercial space on grade, and two units above to six residential units with roof decks. Renovate the existing three-story dwelling and add an addition to the rear. All existing flows will be lowered and reframed with new bays along Saratoga Street and Marion Street. The violation of Article 2017-5, this is in the East Boston iPod. Article 32, Section 4, G card applicability. Articles 53, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling use is forbidden. Article 53, Section 52, roof structure restriction. Article 53, Section 56, off-street parking is insufficient. Article 53, section 57.3, traffic visibility across the corners. Article 53, section nine, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 53, section nine, the building has excessive in stories. Article 53, section nine, the building has excessive in feet. Article 53, section nine, the front yard is insufficient. Article 53, section nine, the side yard is insufficient. And article 53, section nine, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Linz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. Um, and I have the page numbers we can probably jump right to for ease of use for the board. If we could jump to uh, page six, uh, Madam Ambassador, that would be great to start off. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is a uh, pre-existing non-conforming use and structure located uh, at the lower end of the Eagle Hill section of East Boston. Um, our proposal would be to eliminate the uh, ground level commercial use uh, and to uh, add an addition to the rear of the building, reprogram the entire building to a multifamily use. Uh, this would result in a very substantial upgrade to the entire building. Uh, we are proposing to have uh, private roof decks for the upper level. Those would be accessed by hatch, of course, uh, not with uh, any proposal for, for a head house. Uh, this is located, uh, however, in a 2F 2000 district, that is the zoning uh, that's been in place since 1993 in East Boston. Uh, as you can see from some of the context photos, we are surrounded by numerous multifamily residential uses. This is located less than a block from the uh, smaller commercial district located on Bennington uh, Street. So, so Mr. Lentz, can you tell us first a couple of things? So the zoning district is 2F2000. Correct. So you're talking about combining the two lots to result in 1,992 square feet? That is correct. The current building, uh, which contains the commercial use and two residential units above, mm -hmm. uh, is already on a non-conforming size lot. We would be adding a rear parcel that would result in uh, approximately uh, just under 2,000 square feet total. Uh, we believe that the rear lot was a part of the uh, existing no, lot. But but let's let's just get an understanding. So what is the what is the lot size then? One thousand nine hundred ninety-two square feet. Okay. So then, 
It looks like the neighborhood context might be three families at maximum. Um, so can you talk through um, the number, the units, the size of the units, um, and, um, and also talk through the roof decks? Sure. Yeah, and, and with respect to the context, Madam Chair, um, and as I showed in the um, street photos, uh, diagonally and directly across the street uh, in all directions are multifamily uh, structures, including a large elderly complex directly across the street, so we use former, former middle school. Um, the, the two buildings, uh, both directly across and diagonally across, are uh, six plus unit buildings as well. Uh, with respect to the unit size, these are all being proposed as two bedroom uh, units. Uh, the size averages around 860 square feet. There is one unit uh, based upon the uh, existing layout, which is about 700 square feet. Uh, and I understand that you know certainly we can look at uh, modifying the size of that unit uh, based upon the minimum minimum size requirements. Um, the the actual zoning uh, violations that would be applicable in this case uh, first would be the. Uh, the uh, change to a further non-conforming use, because this is ground level commercial with residential, it is already uh, non-conforming. We're proposing to substitute that with multifamily, uh, which is more consistent with the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, in addition, uh, we uh, already have the existing condition of a uh, non-conforming height, because the 2F district does permit uh, only two and a half stories, but 35 feet. Uh, this is already a pre-existing three-story building. It will remain a three-story building, but in order to address the violation um, as a result of the uh, addition that we're proposing, we do require a variance for the height because that would be a three-story addition. Uh, in addition, uh, we would be increasing the FAR, the current FAR obviously being non-conforming above the 80% that's permitted uh, in the East Boston District for this neighborhood. Uh, we would be increasing that up uh, to about uh, 2.9, uh, which because we have uh, uh, almost entire lot coverage uh, at three levels, we would be increasing the FAR significantly. Uh, but I would point out that this is a corner lot condition, uh, very similar to what we've dealt with other corner lots where uh, it's difficult to create uh, sort of the setbacks that are usual mid block or uh, on lots that are you know much wider uh, for purposes of, of compliance with the regulations under and Article the, 53. And the roof deck, from what I can gather, is accessed by hatches? So that is correct. Um, we actually proposed this originally. This was being proposed a four-story building based on consultation with the neighbor. We kept it at a three-story uh, in exchange for some uh, concessions that we were proposing. Okay. Um, Mr. Simonelli? We have both letters from the applicant. Okay. Madam Chair, we have them as well. Thank you. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. You know, I think the, the height is, is consistent. I, I guess I'm a little uh, unsure why they're um, sort of, the addition I think could be seen as an addition to, you know, a, a nice historical corner building and it sort of seems like it's going the other way. So um, I, I don't, in terms of the proposed scope, have any real questions, but I have a little bit of a question of the architecture and the approach. but. Um, generally, I think the uh, units are fine and the roof hatch or the roof decks are uh, accessed by hatch from the units below. So no other questions for me. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, I, I have a question for the applicant. The addition is uh, now on, looks like from Google Maps, uh, an empty lot. Um, so it means that if this were approved, the entire combined lot would be covered by the building to be zero uh, usable open space. Um, what is the open area used for now? Uh, Mr. Through the chair, Mr. Like the, the open area is a separately assessed parcel. Uh, it is used for parking, but not parking required for the building. Uh, it's, I, I would term it as convenience parking. Uh, we are seeking a parking variance for this proposal. However, we have uh, arranged not as part of any formal ancillary use. We have arranged uh, for four off-street parking spaces within uh, close walking distance uh, of the site. And that was in response to some of the comments that we heard uh, from the neighborhood. 
So th there's currently a curb cut into that space now. You would you would close that off and 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 have street parking there instead. That that would be correct. In our original iteration of this project, uh, where we did have four stories, we were proposing to have some ground level parking. Uh, that was met with some uh, concern and resistance uh, from from some abutters. Um, the removal of the curb cut on Marion Street certainly will return on street parking to the public. Uh, and that was uh, seemed to be a, a good compromise, especially since we're able to uh, find some remote parking to uh, associate with the building. Thank you. Um, to pick up on Mr. Um, Mr. Robinson's point, I think. Um, so what is the um, distance from the building, the current building to the abutter um, and the current and the proposed building from um, anything abutting it because I just want to make sure that we're not in fact um, eliminating, eliminating light and air and all those necessary things to the abutters um, and possible uh, new construction on any abutting lot. Sure. So presently I believe the setback that I'm chair is about 18 feet in width. Um, uh, the zoning district permits a two and a half foot setback if this were considered a side yard. Because we are dealing with the corner lot condition, we essentially have side yards on both uh, Marion and Saratoga Street. On the Saratoga Street uh, elevation, we are attached to the building next to us. Uh, that would not be the condition on the rear because we are further back than our building uh, immediately to our left on Saratoga. Um, we are proposing a setback, I believe it's at two and a half feet on the uh, Sarah, uh, the Marion Street elevation, which would be consistent with a typical side yard setback for buildings uh, in the 2F2000 district. Okay. And um, I understand, you know, the community conversation about parking, but um, has the applicant um, or the developer looked at decreasing the number of units and in fact uh, decompressing the parking situation by providing um, the parking space on the under parking spaces on the undeveloped lot in support of this building. So we, we did that originally, Madam Chair, the configuration of the building in order to accommodate that resulted in an increase in height, a vertical addition as well. We uh, opted to eliminate now, I, that. I think, I think my question is, you know, can you, has the developer looked at maintaining the height, decreasing the number of units, and providing off-street parking um, and perhaps some associated open space. We we, we did look at, um, with, with the current version, we did look at an option that actually uh, had two parking spaces uh, on the uh, proposed addition. It would be probably not feasible to add the parking under the existing structure uh, if we're preserving the existing structure. Um, Engineering-wise, it would probably be very difficult to do that. Um, so we did look at the option of two. We did, and there was sort of a mixed commentary on this, but uh, because we are within relatively short walking distance of airport station, we did hear support uh, from abutters that said that they uh, preferred that this would be a project that, uh, that recognized Carlos households as well uh, because of its proximity to uh, airport T station, as well as the opportunity to remove that curb cut and add some on-street parking for, uh, for the public. Okay. Um, let's just see, Mr. D'Amico, did you have a comment? Yes, I was just wondering if there is any parking provided. Um, I haven't seen a parking plan uh, at all. If anything, uh, if any parking spaces are being provided, if there are, uh, I would like to critique uh, the design. There's no parking proposed under this plan, Mr. D'Amico. Okay, thank you. Okay, any, quest any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support um, and then followed by opposition? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant met with the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association in December of 2021. The association voted in support of the project. They liked the unit sizes, and their letters had some concerns regarding number of units and rear addition, but they're happy to see changes that will improve the conditions of the existing property. At this moment, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. 
Madam Chair, I have no raise hand. Madam Chair, sorry. Madam Chair, Secretary here. We do have some letters of support. We have one letter of opposition. And Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. Um, okay. Uh, may I hear from the BPDA as the city's planning agency? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. We recommend a denial on this just because of the massing. Um, in our recommendation, we also cited, uh, you know, the lack of usable open space and also the setback for the addition on Marion Street, understanding that this is uh, a non-conforming structure already. Our concerns are mainly with Marion Street. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I could just add, I, I understand the BPDA's position. Um, we're, you know, when dealing with corner lots, that this is always a challenge to have uh, either a gap between the building for open space that looks more like an empty lot versus uh, actually developing the site. And typically, it's not uncommon to see the corner lots uh, develop in this manner. Yeah, my 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 thought is that the developer could have been a little bit more thoughtful um, and figured out a way to. Um, you know, get the, not not bank of the largest R ROI, but um, figure out a way to make this long term usable because, you know, sometimes, you know, people work in places that are not, um, you know, blue line accessible or something else. So or they work odd hours or whatever it is. Um, and so it's 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 that is this supposed to be rental or um, or um, purchase this is intended for ownership so these would be contracts okay okay so given all that information may I have a motion please can we just see your rendering up on the screen please Mr. Okay. Lenz, what sheet should we be looking at um, you can go to uh, 19 would probably be a good rendering or 17 as an elevation All right, if someone wants to go ahead with the motion, that's fine. Um, yeah. Can I, oh, who's, who's running the screen today? Can you guys just go back to um, the plans? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, page okay. 17 is the elevation and 19 oh, would probably be yeah. a good rendering. Yeah. Yeah, you have to remove. Um, further down, perhaps uh, that's twelve, maybe it's Any one of those would probably work. Um, okay. So, I, I'm going to make. I, I hear everyone's concerns, but I drive around that area a lot, and and these vacant areas on the corners are a real eyesore to the to the neighborhood. Um, I'll make a motion to approve, but with some heavy BPDA design review to try to match the surrounding buildings. Is there a second? I'll second that motion, Secretary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm opposed um, because I do think that the applicant could have been more creative on this one, but motion carries for approval with design review. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the board. On the next case, calling VOA 129-1968, 35 Upton Street. This is for Unit 3, constructing new Rear balcony with steel frame and new exterior door. The violation of Article 64, Section 9, Section 9, Townhouse, Row House, extensions into the rear yard. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, this is John Greenup, um, uh, counsel for the uh, applicant, and uh, my address is Box uh, 380694, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I'm joined today by Matt Cerisi, who is the uh, uh, contractor in charge of the, the uh, project and uh so a question is um is that is that bracket supported 
Yes, I believe it is. We can go down. Uh, and, what is, and what is the dimension of that bracket supported uh, balcony? Uh, it's six by 23 feet. Okay. Okay, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. It confirmed it is a bracket mounted um, and the dimensions as are as indicated. No questions. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crusilli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I uh, would like to defer to the board on this matter. An abutter uh, meeting was held on March 16th of 2022, where support was shown by the abutters. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Sling's office. The councillor would like to walk record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. BPDA design review. Um, has it been the landmarks? Yes, I believe it's been. It's yes, been it, I think it has. So I don't think there's a BPDA design review. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to see it if landmarks is already stamped off on it. Okay, I didn't know if they had. All so right. there's a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1177912, 82 to 84 Boston Street. This is to construct a single phase digital billboard, freestanding pylon sign to the rear of 82 Boston Street. The violations, Article 65, Section 40, sign regulations, freestanding signs, use is forbidden. Article 9, Section 1, uh, extension of a non conforming use is conditional. Article 11, Section 6, signs are subject to other regulations. Article 33, Section 16, beer right pylon sign is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, side yard residential dimension is, insuff is insufficient. Article 11, Section 9, electronic signs are conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Smith from Adams and Marancy with the business address of 350 West Broadway, South Boston. With me today is the billboard operator, Media Partners. His name is Peter McClary, who will be joining me as well. So as read into the record, this is a proposal to construct a 14 foot by 48 foot single face digital billboard freestanding pylon to the rear of the property of eight. I'm, I'm sorry, Councilor, what was the dimension of that billboard 14 by what? 14 by 48. Okay, go ahead. So this is this will be constructed to the rear of the property of 82 through 84 Boston Street on Interstate 93, which is owned by the Polish American Citizens Club, a nonprofit organization. Uh, a, a conditional permit will be required uh, if this is if this is approved. We understand and we respect the board and the city's position on billboards, but this is so. So, so Councillor, can you just talk to through the billboard so we can understand? it in context of the lot is there anything that will show it uh where it's going to be on the lot and any rendering or anything about that billboard so the the land survey which was submitted as far as the plans that you do have um uh, was was would show the actual location of the billboard on the rear of the property overlooking interstate 93. okay tell us what sheet um the um uh, we should be looking at so this should be I mean it should be page right 20 at, page 21 20 sorry great page 20 you. okay yeah. and so uh, this would be um, a digital billboard then yes correct so we, we, we understand and respect the board and the city's position on billboards, but this is a unique proposal that would also assist in the city's vision of decluttering billboard signs in residential neighborhoods. We've committed to removing three existing locations from the Dorchester neighborhoods and replacing or adding one of, of this digital face single billboard on Interstate 93, a location where billboards should be and not within our neighborhoods. One of those three locations have been currently identified, which will remove four faces from the neighborhood. That is in the area of Freeport Street and Dorchester Ave. The other two locations will soon be identified collaboratively, working together with our district city councilor Baker's office 
and as well as the local civic association. Further, we would request that if this is approved, that no permit shall issue until those three locations have been officially removed from our neighborhoods. And are those all legal billboards or are they illegal billboards? Because we know we do have a lot of illegal billboards in our city. So those are, those are all legal billboards as far as, as, as to my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge there. Um, so there are, active, uh, there, there are active conversations with the landlords um, which have been identified as far as three locations. One, again, has been confirmed in the, the previous location, as I, as I stated on Dorchester Avenue, and Fremont Street, which consists of four faces of billboards. So there's actually two billboards on the property that are double faced that will be removed. And again, those are within our residential neighborhoods. Um, and then the two other locations will be determined, um, obviously, prior to uh, having a permit issue if this shall be approved. And again, we would request that a proviso be added, stating that no permit shall issue until these three locations have been determined and have been, have been removed as, as discussed here today. Okay, so it looks like um, no new billboards shall be allowed within 600 feet of a federally funded highway subject to the Federal Highway Beautification Act unless approved by the Board of Appeal. Okay, Correct. Got okay, got it. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Well, the, the, there's no, I guess I, I, I would expect to see some visual aid of this in terms of its context from Interstate 93, uh, from the adjacent bridge across 93, some other uh, visuals there. This is the only real drawing that shows anything associated with it so it's a little hard for me to assess i mean the, the information is here in terms of the basic uh, construction of the billboard but nothing related to its visual impact on anything so madam chair uh, secretary have you seen the bpda's recommendation yes we'll we'll, we'll wait till we get there okay. um so a little hard for me to assess it from anything other than what it is i think okay um, something so so hold on, uh, Ms. Uh, Counselor. So this is freestanding. This is in a residential subdistrict. It's a 3FD 2000 district. Will there be parking uh, below that? No, what, how, is, how is it going to work? So, so the, the, there is no parking below there. So as you can see, um, well, try to, try to de, de, depict the actual picture. So as, as you can see here, there is, this is the rear of the property, Interstate 93. Um, it, it will be overseeing. As you may see that there's Rosson Street, there's three a, a butters that will have any sort of visual. These are the only butters that will have some sort of visual, which would be minimal visual of the actual sign. Um, they'll have a side view. So, which is, which is great for us is that there's this new light blocking technology that I'm sure Peter McCleary can get a little bit more. Yeah, no, we, we, we know about that and we know how neighborhoods um, feel that in certain neighborhoods they're just they, they don't they're not responsive so if I look at this it looks like you're adding a two-story addition is that right to this building no there is no two-story addition this is going to be on the existing uh, condition of the building itself so again there'll be a freestanding pylon not attached to the to the rear of the building it would just be placed in the in the backyard of the building very close and, to okay the building. and and is that triangular parcel there also owned by the applicant correct yes it is Okay. And also, the applicant has committed to the neighbors of, of new, some new plantings to prevent any sort of an eyesore from 93 that they actually do have. Um, and it also would help with the exhaust that they do, uh, that does accumulate from Interstate 93 as well. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Yeah, I'm a little confused about a couple of things. We, we don't have a rendering. Uh, is that correct? We don't uh, to be able to see how it is uh, viewed from from various angles from the neighborhood. That's question number one. And then question number two, I was co very confused about this uh, concept of three other bill existing billboards coming down in exchange for this. That's the proposal. Where are those billboards? What are they? And, and, and are they all owned by the same? It just seems like a, I don't think I've ever heard anything like that before. Great, so, so yes, all right. So I can get a little bit more into the actual billboard itself. So, so the, the, the operator has committed to removing three existing static locations. As, as you know, the, this location here is overlooking 93. 
Um, and again, the city's vision is, is to declutter some of these static signs that are actually in the middle of our residential neighborhoods. We've worked together with the district councilor and the, the uh, local civic group, McCormick Civic Association. We determined one location, uh, and it's in the vicinity of Dorchester Ave and Fremont Street. That location there has two billboards double faced. So there's four faces that actually will be removed from this location. And again, as far as the other two, those are still collaboratively being worked together uh, along with the district councilor in the local civic group to determine those two locations to try to find more of the uh, of these static locations that are factored into our neighborhood that we can. I know that the operator is in active discussions with some of these uh, landowners. Um, so, in, so, so I think, Councillor, what we're trying to understand is are these potential billboards that are these billboards that are proposed to be eliminated? Are they owned by the same media company? No, or they are, are not. They, uh, are they so, they're per, potentially buying out other other media companies then? I don't know the exact terms. I just know that there's active oh, conversation okay. in there. Okay. Well, no, no, but that, but that goes to the heart of my question. How can you commit to removing other billboards that you don't control? Well, the active conversations that these guys have committed prior, you know, to hand in, in other locations outside of the city of Boston have, have come to fruition. And that's the intention is to have their proviso if if in fact these throw locations do not come down, no permit shall issue. So, okay, and uh, all right, so that okay, and then my other initial question had to do with the rendering of how it looks. Uh, Eric, do we have anything like that? We we don't. I mean, are you said and you just one question? You said Fremont Street or Freeport Street? Is this uh, he, he, initially, he initially said Freeport, but it's Fremont because you've said that twice. It's well, it, I believe it's, it's Freeport Street in Dorchester. Freeport, it's, it's not Freeport. Fremont, it's Fremont. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's my error. My apologies. Okay. 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 Excuse me if I might add something. It's Peter McClary from uh, Media Partners. Um, we do have visual renderings, and I'm not entirely sure why they haven't been delivered to the board because. We've had to present them to our abutters and the Civic Association, including um, Mr. Hung. Um, so okay. if they can't be provided right now, maybe they should be provided. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Uh, let me let me just go now um, for um, to see if there's anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition. <laughs> Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Quinn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted an abutters meeting for the proposal on September 23rd, 2021. There were mixed opinions on the digital billboard. Those in opposition cited potential negative effects of light pollution on neighbors and distractions on drivers. Those in support spoke in favor of the benefits of the billboard and what they would provide for the Polish Club. Months pass with the developer continuing outreach, and since March, the most immediate abutters expressed support, and the McCormick Civic Association voted in support of the proposal. The bordering Columbia Savin Hill Civic has written a letter of opposition. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have those letters. We have letters of support. We also have the letters of opposition. Madam Chair, Madam members, of the, board. Madam Chair, okay. members of the board, uh, Paul Sullivan on behalf of City Council at large, Michael Flaherty. The council would like to note that this project has gone through an extensive community process and as a result has received support from Director Butters as well as the Area Civic Association. The project will remove three billboards from the surrounding area that are considered a blight and importantly, this billboard will enable a longtime area nonprofit, the Polish American Citizens Project, to remain in operation. Therefore, Council Flair, I'd like to go on record of support. Thank you. Madam Chair, do you have a few raised hands? Uh, start with Elizabeth. Stop. You've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for a record, please? Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Can you state your name and address for the record? Yes, my name is Elizabeth Ivan Chabber. I live at 31 Rawson Street. I am the most immediate abutter to the billboard, and I 
and I will only only a butter that will view this directly that will be impacted by the billboard. And I support the project. I support the projects because I grew up in the area. I'm Polish. And the American Citizen Club is an important organization for the Polish community. It has been around for seven, 80 years. And the billboard is the, the only thing that will keep it to survive financially. So that's why I'm supporting it. Okay, can I, anybody else who speaks, please give us new information. And after you speak, please lower your hand. And then Peter, you're next. Can you state your name and address for the record? Sure. Uh, my name is Peter Dizek. Uh, my address is 141 Dorchester Avenue, Unit 220 in South Boston. Um, I am actually the current treasurer of the Polish American Citizens Club. Um, I just wanted to briefly, first of all, thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak. And I just wanted to take a, a quick second to talk no, about- No, no, hold on. Um, your, your, um, your attorney gave us the information that we need. We know the Polish American Club. I'd like to hear from the butters on this proposal. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. And uh, Alexander. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record? My name is Alexander Kowalczyk. I live at 54 St. Margaret Street. I'm here in support of the project. Um, the Polish club is a, a pillar of the community and it preserves the Polish identity and the Polish triangle. Um, and I just, I'm as a resident, I just wanted to uh, express my support for this project. Thank you. Okay, and we have uh, Bot. Yeah. At the request, I mean, you can, can you state your name and address for the record? What's my name? William Jabuco. 28 Rawson Street, Dorchester, Mass. And I want to say uh, good morning, members of the board. My wife and I have child care responsibilities, so I need to make my testimony brief. Uh, my name is William Tribuco. My wife, Alexander, is the homeowner of the Butter. We reside within 100 feet of this proposal. My wife has given me her authority and consent for me to speak on her behalf due to child care responsibilities. You Tell me, are you, are you in support or in opposition? I'm getting to that right now, Chair. Um, you should have my wife's email support on record. I ask you to reference that. So on behalf of my wife and myself, we support this proposal as a gesture of peace going forward for all parties involved, and most importantly, for our family's well-being. Thank I want you. To thank, um, thank you. May I, Mr. Ambassador? Yes, Thank you, Madam Ambassador, Madam Chair, members of the board. First of all, good morning and a happy Mother's Day to all the most present at this meeting. Uh, I, we, the Carpenters Union, we own the headquarters, our building at 750 Dorchester Avenue. No, no, in the other locations, we're a little, I am not sure if there's going to be any positive or negative effect to our uh, building. Um, just want to bring that up to your attention. Thank you. Thank you. I have one additional hand, Erica. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, hi, good morning. Um, my name is Erica Meintruck Socks. My address is 13 Dorset Street in Dorchester, Mass. Um, I've been a resident of the Polish Triangle for almost 15 years. I also grew up in this neighborhood. Um, and um, in addition to just being a member, to living in the community um, for as long as I have, um, I have been a member of the Polish Club. I am currently on the board. And I want to just kind of point out that this billboard would sustain the future of this club. We have been around. Thank you. For no, thank you. We, we are very familiar with the club. They've been before us before. So thank you. Um, no, no, no. So, um, Ms. Ambassador, any more raised hands? No, no. Um, may I hear from the BPDA, the city's planning agency? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. Uh, as with all electronic signs and billboards, we recommended denial. Uh, we feel that it's an inappropriate location. Also, without any sort of rendering being submitted as part of our review, we can't, we couldn't make a recommendation anyway uh, uh, to support it. But our policy is to always uh, oppose electronic billboards. So we're on record for denial. Thank you. And that's been a, a city policy for Yes, for a very long time. Yes. Thank you. Okay, got it. Um, given that information, may I have a motion, please? I'll make um, a motion. 
I'll make a motion to approve um, with the following provisos um, that the permit doesn't issue until the applicant figures out the three billboards that will be removed. I know they figured out one, but the additional two um, in BPDA design review. Is there a second? I'll second, Secretary. All, the, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It sure would help to have a rendering, but no. Hold on, hold on. Yep. We are we are in a motion state. We kind of know what billboards look like. So I hear two voices in support of that. Three voices in support of the motion and the provisos. Is ever so. Whoever is in opposition, please raise your voices. I'm in opposition, Jean. Eric's in opposition. I'm in opposition, so um, the motion does not carry. So, is that right? Can I make um, another motion? No, so it's been denied. Madam uh, Chair, Mr. Robinson, I believe, stated you would like to make a motion. Yes. No, but there's three opposition, so it's been denied. There was a uh, um, so it's it's been denied. Thank you. Calling the next case. <clears throat> Calling DOA 1280084-41 Door Street. This is a proposed curb cut to add two off street parking spaces. The violation of Article 50, sec Section 29, the use of open space is insufficient. Name and address for the record. He's on one second. Um, Mark, go ahead. Hi, thank you for um, I have to stay as an attendee. Um, I'm not sure why it's not turning on my camera. Uh, I, I don't have to make it as a panelist. I, I tried to make you a panelist and you didn't accept it. Let me try it again. Okay. Okay, go on. So tell us what you're proposing. Thank you. I apologize for the little technical difficulty. Good morning, members of the board. My name is Mark. I am the owner of uh, 41 Thor Street in uh, Fort Hill, Roxbury, Boston. Um, I currently own or occupy the building um, with my family. My plan here is to essentially um, create a curb cut in the back of the property on the rear, rear of the lot in order to create off-street parking. Um, this is on Lambert Avenue and it's Lambert Avenue on the left side if you're coming down the road is a no parking side so this would not be removing any parking off the street um, and it would be essentially creating space for one to two vehicles. Um, the building was his had been empty for quite a bit of time um, and now there are over 10 occupants living in it and a lot have cars so um, in speaking to my abutters um, a lot of them were in support just to avoid congestion on this corner um the so so tell us um so if i'm looking at the drawing that's up on the screen um your property line so your property line is not does not go to the chain link fence that is city of boston property back there correct that chain link fence has been there pre-existing I, I did not put it there okay so your property the the the, the dash line in the back Right, right, just just into the building is the is the is the property, right? Yes, it's okay. the it's the first line from the building. Yes. Okay. Um. Can 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 everybody please mute? Yes. Okay. Um. How are the plans, Mr. Robin? Uh, plans are good. I think that um, I, you know, it's not a front yard per se, I guess it's a side yard, but it is quite close to the property line due to the, the sort of, the, I'd like to hear Mr. D'Amico's uh, proposal on this. And it is noted as a 14 foot curb cut. I think we typically propose a 10 foot curb cut for a residential, but uh, no other questions other than that. Mr. D'Amico? Yeah. Madam Chair, lady, members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTV. Um, the length of the parking area is much too small. Uh, the minimum would be 36 feet, and this is only 26 feet. 
Um, I think there'd be potential for an overhang on the sidewalk. So I'm going to recommend denial. Thank you. Um, is any, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Jason Gant with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Mark had met with the Highland Park Neighborhood Coalition on two separate occasions. One time, uh, just to reference his before case, was the actual roof deck that they had um, agreed on, but they did oppose the two parking spaces, citing that they felt that it was not enough adequate space for the parking. But then also additionally, there were parking concerns with the with the um, location that he had chosen as there were city bollards installed there and with the plans that he has shown to the coalition the bollards would have to be removed and there were numerous traffic issues with the folks coming out from lambert Ave side and actually having a few car mishaps so folks don't feel safe with the proposal that mark has given here but do welcome it back to show any new uh, changes to the proposal thank you Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have letters of support. We also have one letter of opposition, and the opposition was what the mayor just stated about the bollards. Mr. Ambassador, Madam Chair, I do have one raised hand. Um, Zion sent a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please, if you're looking to give testimony here? Also okay. have Bob. Bob, are you looking to give testimony here? We've heard from Bob. Bob, can okay. you add your last name please, to your um, to your identifier here? Um, if that information, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll actually I'll make a motion to approve. Um, I think there is some ability to rework this a little bit. Maybe even keep two of the bollards. Um, and work with the BPDA on uh, seeing if they can go deeper and maybe not as much paving to the side. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve with BPDA design review. Yeah, can we just maybe, Is there a maybe oh, yeah, just, just maybe like a fence with like a gate to, you know, if we can just put, put that on the radar for design review and I'll second that. All those in favor? I, I, I would also, I'd like to amend it to uh, uh, reduce the curb cut size from 14 to 10. <laughs> so all those are uh, fine for me in terms of my approval. So uh, add a, a, a gate or a fence to make sure there's no overhang um, and then reduce the size of the curb cut and work with the BPA on screening and buffering and the existing bollards um, to the best of their ability. So Mr. Robinson, are we making a gate mandatory on this design review? or just making sure that they don't overhang and we can push the spaces back as far as possible. Yes, a gate would be helpful, um, I think, but I guess not required. Whatever okay. strategy that keeps it off the sidewalk. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Is there, there's a second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Aye. Madam Chair, it's now 1034. I'm going to call the 1030 cases for any deferrals or withdrawals for 1030 only. If you could give me the address first, please. 1593 East Falcon. Hold on two seconds, one at a time. What was the first? Say it again. 59 Falcon. Thank you. For the record, calling DOA 1311763, 59 Falcon Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street. East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner. And, uh, are you, what are you, are you requesting a deferral? I'm sorry, yeah, yes, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Um, so we did hear from the BPDA on some of its um, uh, recommendations on this. If you'd like to go back and take a look to see if there's some way to rework some of the details on this project. Um, and we believe that we uh, can work a little bit more closely with the neighborhood, so we're requesting a deferral. Can, can I ask everybody to please um, mute yourselves so that we can um, hear what's going on? Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries the, the date, please. We have a date of July 12th at 11.30. Um, Madam Chair, Mr. Secretary, is it possible to get uh, after 
July 30th or before uh, July 1st. We can do uh, we can do August 9th. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you. Okay, August 9th at 11:30. Is there any other anybody else? 753 East Broadway. For the record. Calling DOA 125 5773 753 East Broadway. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Tom Miller, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller in Boston, representing the owner. Um, we're going. We're requesting a deferral um, at the request of City Council President uh, Flynn's office to continue to work on some issues addressed by the abutters regarding uh, parking and other matters. May I have a motion, please? Motion to defer. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The date, please. They have a date of uh, July 12th at 1130. Thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1030 only? Okay, going back to the 930 cases, calling B case BOA 130 Auriga Street. This is a poor slab, reload heating, heating system, new bathroom violation is Article 65, Section 9, excessive FAR. Name and address for the record, please. Is Christy or Scott Driscoll on this call? Yeah, let me, touch. I know they're on already. Yeah, they are. Okay, go ahead. Keep it unmuted. Uh, we can't hear you. Go ahead. Hi, Chris and Scott. You speaking? We cannot hear you. There. Okay, let's just move to the next case, please. Sorry, the audio wasn't working. Okay, so go ahead, put your name and address on the record. Sure. My name is Kristen Driscoll, 23 Auriga Street, Dorchester. And tell us, go ahead, just tell us what you're planning on doing. Sure. We are planning on finishing existing space in our basement. So we'll be adding about um, 600 square feet to the basement of livable space, and then we'll be adding a storage room in the back. So the, what you see on the screen right now is um, the sort of existing space. Um, it's really just the basement unfinished. And if you go to the next. So, so hold on, can you please tell us a couple of things? Yep. Is this a one family or a two family? So, so it's can't. a one family. It's a one family. What and tell us about the floor to ceiling height in that basement? Sure. So the floor to ceiling height is seven feet one inches. Okay. And then um, uh, tell us again what is proposed for the basement? What what kind of use in the basement? Yeah, we're proposing to use it as a family room and an office um, and to add a bathroom. And so we'll also be relocating um, the different systems down there to make that happen, make that possible. Okay, and how is it connected to the first floor? What about the so, rest of the indemnification clause? Oh, so there's a staircase at the front. If you scroll down a little bit, um, you'll see right there, there's a staircase um, going up to the first floor. So we already have the existing staircase and a door um, that goes from our entryway of our home. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are fine. Uh, it, it is uh, below grade, but you know, as, as the proponent uh, summarized it, it looks like it's, it's an extension of their living space, not bedrooms. So I think um, we should just maybe pro put a proviso for no bedrooms, but no questions on the scope. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Wynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant flyed their neighbors and earned several letters of support and the Pope's Hill Neighborhood Association voiced no opposition. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Our thing is just, I've been waiting. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City wow. Councilor, Frank Baker's office would like to go on record and support. It's going to be later on today. 
Please, whoever has their mics un un unmuted, please mute yourself. I have no additional questions. Okay. Uh, given that information, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve with the proviso no bedrooms be in the basement. I'll second that, Eric. Is all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes. Motion carries. Calling the next case, calling DOA 129 29 St. John Street. This is to confirm actually as a one family at a two story bump up to an existing conforming single family residence, remodel the interior spaces. Proposed addition will exceed the applicable floor area ratio by 223 square feet. Violation Article 55, Section 9, excessive FAR. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Kim and Will Messenger of 29 St. John Street, and we're joined by our architect, Ed Forte. Explain to us what you're proposing to do. We're looking to put a small addition on this single family house to make more livable space uh, with a laundry and kitchen and storage on the first floor, sorry, laundry bathroom and storage on the first floor and a bathroom and walk-in closet on the second floor. Okay. And that's a 223. And this is um, this is uh, owner occupied. Yes, ma'am. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. Uh, no questions. Very straightforward. Is any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Hi. Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tiffany Caballero here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This applicant underwent an extensive community process, but had overwhelming support from Director Butters, as well as the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council Zoning Subcommittee. I have three letters of support at this time. Additionally, the mayor's office would like to go on record and defer to the board judgment. Thank you. Sec Madam, Madam Chair, Secretary, yeah, we do have those letters the mayor's office just spoke of. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> calling the last case at 930, calling DOA 115 5 to 7 Hooker Street. This is new construction of nine for sale condominium units and nine off street off street parking spaces. The violation article 51, section 8, and nine family use is forbidden. Article 51, section 50.2, the conformity of the existing building alignment. Article 51, Section 56, off street parking and loading requirements, spaces required, proposed is nine. Article 51, Section 56, off street parking and loading. Article 51, Section 9, the floor day ratio is excessive. Article 51, Section 9, the building has excessive in stories. Article 51, Section 9, the building has excessive in feet. Article 51, Section 9, Section 9, front, front yard is insufficient. Article 51, Section 9, side yard is insufficient. And Article 51, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Paul Rufo. I'm an attorney in Boston at Smith, Doug, and Buell, and Rufo, uh, representing uh, the ownership, Unicon Inc., uh, Mr. Akiolia. And uh, with me um, is the architect on the project, Tan Tanya Carrier. Uh, just briefly, this is uh, nine uh, for sale condominiums uh, on a uh, sort of a, uh, a, a, a peninsula or uh, uh, that exists uh, uh, at the corner of Royal Street and Hooker Street. It's surrounded uh, on three sides uh, by uh, city streets. Empire Street is a paper street, meaning it's not paved, but uh, it is there so that um, these combined lots will give us uh, uh, over 8,000 square feet um, and uh, we've been to the uh, neighborhood. Uh, uh, Mr. Roofer, while you yeah. while you while you have um, the screen, tell us about the proposal. We'll hear from everybody else right. about everything else. But yeah. you're here on to tell us about the. There's a lot of violations. Uh, right. Talk us through it. Right. So it's a two fam It's a two family, five thousand zone. So we're looking for nine units. Uh, so that's that we need uh, relief for the for the um, for the use. Um, the uh, lot width complies. The frontage complies. Uh, we've we've pulled the property back. The FAR uh, 
allowed is 0.6, and uh, we're looking for 1.87. Uh, so we need relief for that. The height, uh, we're matching the height of the condos next door, but stepping down. So it, that uh, height allowed is 40, 40, I'm sorry, is 35 feet. And we are uh, uh, at the highest point, 42 feet. Um, uh, the uh, side yard complies on one side, um, but on the other side, it doesn't technically because Empire Street, uh, we're too close to Empire Street, but as I say, Empire Street's a paper street, which is 20 feet wide. Uh, and then the parking, uh, we propose nine uh, spaces where 16 spaces are required. We have uh, six compact spaces and three full-size spaces. So uh, that is, uh, I believe, a summary of, of the relief um, that we're requiring. And, and as I was saying, um, and uh, Tanya can, me, can Let me just space. ask you um, sure. a couple more questions. Sure. Any roof decks being proposed? Um, I guess I'd ask Tanya, there's a lot of outdoor space that she's designed into this um, to provide uh, opportunities for the, the owners of the condos to have outdoor space. But I'm not sure if they qualify as roof decks or not. Or are, they, or are they just uh, unit decks? Uh, yes, Tanya Karen here from Coastal Design. There's no roof deck on the, the high roof. Uh, there is a roof terrace on the third floor which is off of the um, top floor unit and private uh, decks. So they're all private deck situations. And please give us the breakdown on the units and the square footage. Yes, uh, there are um, eight two bedroom units, including three of the two bedroom units with a study. And there's one three bedroom unit. Um, the unit sizes range for, from 890 uh, square feet uh, at the smallest to the largest being 1,730 square feet. And the average size is about, uh, is over a thousand square feet. It's about 12, 1,300 square and, feet. And so what's the size of the three bedroom? Three bedroom is um, 1,638 square feet. They're, they're designed to obviously to be uh, attract family ownership. And any affordable units? No. Okay, so, you know, we have this uh, usual dilemma. There are two things that, that are an issue. First, this is a two-family subdistrict, zoning subdistrict. Um, and, you know, um, yes, you do have additional square footage on the lot, but not that much more. And the second issue is that we've seen a lot of projects come in at nine, um, nine units so that there is um, no meeting of or no um, no affordable unit being proposed so tell us what your thoughts are on both of those the um, I think in terms of the the affordable uh, unit um, what they were tr what uh, the ownership was trying to design in was uh, something that uh, would be uh, affordable with a small a to uh, uh, you know, by designing these smaller two-bedroom units, um, that would allow for for home ownership. But in terms of the, uh, you know, meeting the uh, the Mayor Reno's directive, et cetera, um, just really the economics of the deal is what the decision was. And in terms of the the lot itself, because it is surrounded on three sides, it's sort of a transitional um, area between these uh, row houses along. Uh, uh, Royal Street and uh, the transition into the two family neighborhood. Um, so uh, we felt there was enough of a buffer, uh, especially with providing uh, off street parking uh, between the condos, which are just immediately south of, of the building and the um, two family neighborhood, which is just to the east. So that, okay. was, that was the thought process behind that. Okay. Um how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plan, plans are um, good. I think they um, uh, they represent well. I think the um, I feel like the scale on Royal is is certainly a little bit more uh, consistent with the the sort of scale of that. I think the transitioning down to the two family isn't quite getting there yet, in my opinion. But um, I think in general, um, no real questions about the proposal. Um, seems as proponent is uh, outlined. Okay, any other, any questions from the board? 
Yeah, I, I have a question on the drawing and the rendering. It, it looks like there's nothing on the roof, but in A300 elevation, you can scroll down to that. It looks like there's a rather large head house or something that is not a, a keep scrolling down. Uh, keep going, keep going. Go, go to the elevation. But oh, there we go. Back, oh. back one. Oh. Yeah. Uh, can, yeah. what, what is that big blocky thing on top of the roof? Because it's not on the rendering. Yes, uh, Tanya Kerrigan, Coastal Design. That is the stair to the roof, which is required by code for four story. And is, is there an elevator in there? No, just the elevator penthouse. The elevator won't stop at the roof. Okay, it seems sort of like a uh, seems large for a, for a stairwell. Uh, it, it could potentially be reduced by sloping down um, with the, you know, slope of the stair, if that was a concern. Yeah, okay. It's not, it, by the way, it's not, it's not, it doesn't show on the rendering, I just, uh, for your benefit. Um, but I think, I, I think it would be, this is a, it should be with a reduced uh, scale. Okay, yes, we could do that. Any other questions from the board? Madam yeah. Chair, Mr. D'Amico, I believe you had something to say. Mr. D'Amico, go ahead. Uh, uh, yes, Bob D'Amico, Madam Chair, and uh, members of the board, uh, Bob D'Amico, BTD, and I just want to make sure that the uh, curb cut um, doesn't move, uh, otherwise it'll take a permit from uh, Public Works. Um, and um, let's see, uh, um, that's about it. I just want to make sure that the curb cut um, is uh, you know, in, in place and is not uh, complies. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I just want to, I'll, I'll go on the record, you know, we've seen proposals like this, particularly in Brighton before with very large units that just happened to come in at nine. <laughs> um, you know, the massing of the building compared to what we usually see, you got large oversized units that could be made smaller and add more units and get some affordability in here. Um, so I just want to go on record with that. Um, also, you know, I, um, we just, well, anyway, actually I'll, I'll reserve comment. Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Some background information on the community process it was pretty lengthy. The mayor's office conducted uh, several of others meetings and the applicant also held their own meetings as well with neighbors. Uh, they presented to the Alston Civic Association and the Brighton Alston Improvement Association. Throughout the process, we've heard a mix of opinions. Uh, some residents like that it's going to bring uh, owner occupied units uh, to a neighborhood that has a very low ratio. Um, other residents have expressed concerns about the proposed density as we're moving into North Alston on uh, Hooker and Royal Street, where there's smaller households, as well as concerns about um, parking competition in that area as well. Um, the Bright and Alston Improvement Association voted to support with BPA design review and uh, restrictions that uh, there be deep restrictions. I'm sorry, isn't this, an, isn't this an Alston? This is Alston, yeah. So the uh, ACA voted to, what did ACA vote? So ACA was split. So I believe the uh, DBA should have a letter on file. Uh, their membership couldn't reach a clear consensus. I guess it was split evenly where, like I said, some residents liked that it was owner occupied and be bringing owner, be bringing home ownership opportunities to the neighborhood. Others felt it was far too dense in this particular part of North Falls. Thank you. Good morning, this is Marma Cray from Councilor Breeden's office. The Councilor would like to refer to the ACA on this project. Um, if the project is approved, the council would also like to ask for BPA design review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can everybody please mute? Everybody please mute. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. We do have letters of, a uh, few letters of support. We do have letters of opposition as well, saying that the project is too big for the area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wood. There were about 20 letters in support. I'm Mr. Sorry. Rufo, hold on. Okay, sorry. The chair has the floor. Anybody else speak either in support or in opposition? Madam Chair, we do have a few raised hands. I'll start with Richard. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? 
Yeah, my name is Richard Rogers, 37 to 53 Royal Street. I'm a director butter, I've lived in Lower Alston for 25 years. I'd just like to, uh, just about two minutes, I wanna just urge the ZBA to decline all 10 variances that are required if allowed. It's gonna set a precedent in the neighborhood for being the tallest residential building in the two family 5,000 zone. It'll create a frenzy of development applications and speculation in the neighborhood based on the new height precedent. Also, I believe that there's a lot of neighbors and residents that are not appearing at this hearing or may not have written to the ZBA because of the extensive community process. The developers actually made eight very attractive, specific promises at the meeting to make the development more viable. But on Friday, in an email to a limited group of people, they walked back six of those, those promises, basically, you know, revoking them. In their email, they shaved $240,000 from their first promise to offset the development with the deeded open space, saying that it's not economical, this is a quote, for a project of that size for the developer to spend that money to address the issue, and it should be the responsibility of the city to remedy. So they're talking here about the re-greening and the drainage, the parking and the traffic calming. That means that after they increase the density and the traffic and deliveries, they leave town with the profits and they leave behind that burden to the taxpayers and the neighbors in the city to deal with those issues that they created. So in a nutshell, after promising these attractive offsets to the neighbors, they revoked them and a lot of those neighbors believed that they were coming. Thank you. And please, anybody else who speak, give us new information. Hi, Anthony, go ahead. Yes, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Tony Disidoro representing the Austin uh, Civic Association. Uh, Madam Chair, it should come as no surprise that when we have new construction in an established residential uh, neighborhood, uh, it, it very rarely is a unanimous uh, uh, decision, uh, as was mentioned previously by the Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, the vote of the ACA was basically uh, uh, split down the middle with a slight majority opposing the project. And just to recap, uh, those people who, those members who support the project cite the nine home ownership opportunities. The proponent did make a commitment for 100% owner occupancy. They felt that the parking one-to-one -one ratio was adequate, uh, family size units. And this was a proponent that actually uh, showed us the, uh, their uh, pro forma early in the process that justified what was at the time considered very reasonable uh, sale prices for the units. And then on the other side, uh, Madam Chair, those members that opposed the project, they cite the takedown of a two family home, uh, height and density, uh, increased uh, vehicular traffic was a concern, and they felt that the design was not conducive to assimilating into the existing neighborhood. So basically, uh, it was pretty much cut down the middle with a slight majority uh, opposing the project. Thank you. And I do have um, Catherine. Just make a request to unmute you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Catherine. Hello. Yep, go ahead. Sorry, there's a lot of echo there. We cannot hear you. Hello? Okay. Hello? Yeah, there's some connectivity issues now I'm chair here. I have no additional raised hands. Strapagan, are you on two, on two uh, was she on two devices? I don't think so. I don't see her name twice here. She's really choppy. And I have no additional waste hands. Okay. 
Um, given that information, um, may I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion for the uh, item. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The, uh, the proposal has been denied. Madam Chair, would you like to take a few moments? Or we go right to the 1030. Let's go ahead because, um, and we'll take a break at 1130, okay? It's easy for you to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, call the first case for 1030. Calling to BOA 127. 2471 247 Saratoga Street. This is a change of arc from a single family dwelling to a two family dwelling. <clears throat> Violations Article 53, Section 56, our street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, board members. Uh, it's Chairman Tovar Lamuse, uh, 247 Saratoga Street, East Boston, Mass. So tell us what you're proposing to do. Yeah, so uh, me and my dad, we own this single family house in East Boston on Saratoga Street. We've lived there for the past 20 years. Um, and before that we lived on, on Harbor Street. Um, but obviously uh, we're getting older and we'd like to stay in the house, but right now it's only a single family house. So what we'd like to do is build it to a two family so that <clears throat> my parents can stay in one unit and then I and my brother could stay in the other unit. So we're turning a single family into a two family, but not taking the building down, just gutting the inside and doing the renovation from within. Okay, is there any proposed living space in the basement? Ah, uh, there is. Okay, so, um, and um, tell us about that basement space. Yeah, so there's a two bedroom and a bathroom and then just the washer and dryer. Okay, so I would recommend a deferral because this might be inadequately cited because the only citation here is for off street parking and basement occupancy is, um, is forbidden in Eastie and it looks like also the BPDA is talking about coastal flooding. Um, and so all these, um, you know, raise a, a level of doubt with me, uh, whether this has been cited adequately, uh, the violations have been cited adequately. So may I have a motion um, for deferral to give the applicant an opportunity to get um, this re-looked at by ISD? I'll make a motion to defer. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, the date, please. We'll have a date of July 12th at 1130. Okay. Can, can I, so, 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 so applicant, uh, please talk to the staff at ISD at the Board of Appeal Office, uh, because we don't want to have you come back again and again, because it, so that you just clean everything up and deal with everything the first time around. Okay? Yeah, so, just, uh, no, no, no. So please, so please talk to the staff, okay? Yeah, it's just coming coming as a little bit of a surprise. Just because got it. Of, uh, no, got it, got it completely. But we just it's it's it, it'll be to your long term benefit. Okay. Okay. Next case. Calling, calling the next two cases. Calling BOA one two seven eight one five seven four eighty six to four ninety Medford Street. There's a companion case BOA one two nine nine eight eight zero one seventeen. Baldwin Street, both 486, 490 Medford Street. This is construction of one ancillary off-street parking space to the total of right side of 490 Medford Street house for one vehicle of a motor vehicle for 117 Baldwin Street to be assessed via easement. The violation of Article 9, Section 2, not performing use change. Article 10, Section 1, the limitation of parking area. Article 62, Section 8, the dimensional regulation, insufficient open space. Article 62, Section 29, off-street parking, the design and maneuverability. And Article 62, Section 7, use of regulations, ancillary parking use is conditional. This is for 117 Baldwin Street, creating one ancillary off-street parking space for 117 Baldwin owner to be located on open space at 486, 490 Medford Street. The violation of Article 62, Section 7, 
use and regulations and salary parking is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. There's a way to stand here. Second. Hi, right, Ian. Are you here to give Ian or Mitch here to get tested? Um, to weigh in on this. Uh, Ian, is there? Can you hear me? Yes. Did, I'm sorry. Are you are you uh, speaking with me or someone else speaking? This is Mitch. I'm... Mitch, are you here for the? Yeah, I see your hand is raised. Are you here for 486 Medford? I am. Okay. So. Are you here to get um, tested? It, Ms. Ambassador, it sounds like it's Ian who's here to present. That's correct. Okay. Hey, please Sorry. put your name and address on the record. Sure. I, uh, my name is Ian Urquhart from Notre McClendon and Fish at 155 Seaport Boulevard in Boston. And I'm. I'm just made the panelists of cut out. Um, go ahead, Ian. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Ian Urquhart from Nutter McLennan and Fish at 155 Seaport Boulevard in Boston. And I'm here representing the appellant Jesse McDonald. And also with me is the appellant Jesse McDonald and uh, counsel for the abutter uh, who will be using the space, uh, Michael Cabral. So tell us how this is supposed to work. Okay, so uh, uh, the appellant built three adjoining townhouses fronting on Medford Street uh, uh, about a year or so ago. And associated with that uh, zoning case, there was a lawsuit and a settlement within a butter to provide a uh, one off street parking space adjacent to 486 to 490 Medford Street. So you'll, you'll see it there where it says parking easement for the benefit of 117 Baldwin Street. So we're seeking relief to create this parking space and allow uh, ancillary parking for an abutter to use it. And um, so that, the, the townhouses, how many, how many units in that townhouse? Three. So three, and what's, uh, so that's at, um, that, which, so that's at Medford Street? 486 to 490 Medford Street are three okay. uh, adjoining and, towns. And, and what's at 17 Baldwin, 117 Baldwin Street? Uh, the abutter. So, uh, well, how many units though? I believe that's a single family. That's a single family. And so that those townhouses needed to come to this board uh, for approval? Yes, correct. Was it approved with any provisos? No, I mean, maybe, uh, you know, BRA design review, but uh, n nothing in addition. Okay, tell us what plan we should look at to see how this is going to work. Was it the previous plan we were looking at? That's helpful. I, I did I did provide a, a rendering of a car entering the parking space. I'm, I'm not sure if that's in the package that you have in front of you. Doesn't, doesn't appear to be. Mr. Robinson, um, can you please help edify here? Sure. Um, yeah, I don't have a, a rendering or anything up the, uh, the, as the proponent is referencing. I mean, it does seem like there's a small area that's uh, existing on the okay, uh, hold, side. Hold, hold on. Yeah. Can I ask whoever's uh, um, working the plan? Can you hold on to this, please? Um, because it looks like so. So the proposal, Mr. Urquhart, is to have one space by the side of the building, and then what? Just explain it to us. I'm having a hard time understanding it. Uh, th that's it, really. So there's a there's an existing drive uh, adjacent to the building which the abutter has a legal right to use. So he'll access via the existing curb, curb cut pull into the space and pull out the same way. So there will be a, a parking space with landscaping beside 486 to 490 Medford Street. It's, and so. and where is the front door to these to these townhouses? Is it Choppy Street? Medford, or, fronting it, on Medford. So have, in, 
So in essence, this would be, could possibly be front yard parking then. And what's the dimension of that space? It's 12 by 26.7 and it's largest and 25 on the other side. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, I mean, the plans depict it. So um, it, is, it is a little bit of an odd residual space that looks like they're util trying to utilize for a parking for, uh, you're, you're saying the parking is for the, the person on at 117, which is around the corner? That's correct. Okay. So they park here, walk around on the public way around to their unit or their building down the street, I'll just say. Yes. Okay. Um, so no questions. Okay. So, okay. Um, Bob, there's, already, there's already front yard garages on this for these townhouses. Uh, so you're continuing that use of the front yard for accessing parking. Yes. Correct. I mean, so. Side yard. There's, th there's yeah. three garages that that underneath e the three townhouses on uh, Medford Street, right? Correct. Each each unit that was a uh, townhouse unit that was created has existing parking underneath first floor parking. And how do they? So they act. So in essence, what we're looking at on this on this what's up on the screen is um, is in is inaccurate because then there are actually three curb cuts yeah there's a huge yeah there's three curb cuts a huge one for two townhouses and then maybe okay. for the third and then in this new area okay uh thank you miss panado um uh, mr domico mr domico please can put you can you get on the record please uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Bob D'Amico, BTD. Um, first of all, the curb cut does not align uh, with the proposed parking space. And secondly, uh, there is parking on this street, on this side, both sides actually. So it results in a private parking space, which uh, we are opposed to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Caitlin Stapleton with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, our office would like to defer to the board on this matter. Our office held an abutters meeting on March 22nd um, where there was concerns regarding the parking spot being for a non-resident of the condo association as part of the easement um, that was expressed by abutters along with issues regarding safety. Um, questions were addressed by the applicant, but I received 11 letters of support and four letters of opposition. Thank you. Madam Chair, we do have those letters the mayor spoke of. Mayor's office. Madam Chair, I do have a few raised hands. Um, I'll start with Jesse. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, uh, good morning. This is Jesse McDonald, 9 Belmont Street in Charlestown. Uh, my name is on this case here. Uh, I was one of the partners on the development team. Um, and I just wanted to show, if I can, I can share uh, that record. No, 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 that. just verbally talk to us. Okay, sure. Yeah, I just I just want to guess clarify if, if it helps to kind of scroll through there. I just want to maybe provide a little bit better kind of visual image for you guys to kind of conceptualize what we're trying to achieve here for the um, for the owners at 117 Baldwin okay. who have the easement. Okay, um, Ms. Um, so can you hold on? Can I just hear from um, anybody else? And then I uh, want to have the BPDA go on, on the record. Um, Michael, go ahead. Can you say your name and address for the record, please? Uh, yes, Michael Cabral, uh, 611 Main Street, Winchester, on behalf of Gary Kerr and Karen Kerr, abutters to the property and who would have access to this parking space uh, in support, obviously, of the space itself, wanted to confirm as well that this is the result of uh, litigation that allowed these three townhouses to be built in the first place, and also to state that all unit owners had notice of this easement that would be on the condominium property as well. Thank you. It does create, uh, obviously, additional off-street space that would then create uh, additional parking in the neighborhood as well. Thank you. 
Hey, um, 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 Mr. Hampton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, VPDA. We recommended denial without prejudice. One of our main reasons was uh, insufficient open space, which when you see the project, there's none where this parking was anyway. But well, we're in agreement with BTD. Um, uh, this would be either a massive curb cut or it's gonna be the third curb cut in a row. And we're opposed to this, uh, to this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh um, Mr. Ambassador, anybody else, if we haven't, oh, well, uh, let's just see. May I have a motion, please? Madam yeah. Chair? Yeah, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. May I just, for, for the sake of, of, you know, trying to keep this moving along with everyone's schedule, I just, I feel like maybe we've rolled through one section of that plan that doesn't adequately show what we're trying to achieve. Uh, I honestly have to say I'm very disappointed with this presentation. I would expect that the, the technical people who are hired to present on behalf of the applicant would make sure that we and they were, were really presented with a clear narrative on what is proposed, clearly in context of what's happening. So given that information, I just need a motion. Madam um, Chair, so, I'm sorry. Um, I just no, I want no, to try no, to show no, you an image. That's no, what I'm trying to do. No. Okay. Motion to deny without prejudice. Is there a second? Is there a second? Okay, motion does not carry. May I have another motion? Then Sherry, you second it. I second it. Sherry, yeah. did you second that? Okay, all those yes. in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. So um, you know, let's let's look for another proposal from you. On calling the next case, calling VOA 130 6634 40 Union Park. This is a full gut demolition, including normal work, violations Article 32, Section 4, G card applicability, Article 64, Section 9, excessive, FA, excessive FAR, the basement dormer increase, Article 64, Section 34, restricted roof structure regulations. Reconfiguration of the roof profile and setback. Name and address for the record, please. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston. With me are the uh, homeowners who will be the uh, end users of this building after the renovation project. Caitlin McGovern and her husband, Connor Piggott. Our architects are Mellows and Palladino, and the contractor is Holland and Son Construction Company. There is a GCOD conditional use permit as the first item on the refusal letter, Madam Chair. Can you please go to the other, other, um, please uh, describe what's being proposed and tell us about the violations. Yes, um, there should be on record as there's uploaded into the ISD portal, the revised plans that showed a corrected refusal letter eliminating the FAR violation. Uh, leaving the sole item for consideration, a conditional use permit for the restricted roof structure, which is a dormer on the top floor in the rear of the property with a small roof deck thereon accessed by hatch. Tell That's, us about the basement living. So the basement is existing living space that has always been there. Um, it is a full walkout in the back. And if we scroll down to the elevations, you'll see that what is proposed for the lower level is a full set of windows, floor to ceiling, and the basement will be, um, you know, these are existing a little bit further. These are the proposed floor plans. Next slide will be the elevation. Sorry, keep going. All right, stop here. Oh, so. The garden level floor plan is the next slide, please. No, back, sorry, the other direction. Yes, stop right here. Garden level plan on the left hand side shows a living area in the rear of the building, which, as I mentioned, is a full walkout and an exercise room, a half bath and okay. a small bedroom in the front with a window well in the front yard that's existing. And okay. the ceiling height is 8'4", and okay. the distance from the basement floor to the lower sill in that egress window is 30 inches. 
And and this is a single family, so okay. So yes, tell so us okay. about that roof deck. Now if we could scroll ahead to an elevation. The roof deck is here, 238 square feet at the rear of the building on the public alley on top of what is proposed as the new dormer accessed by a hatch. Okay. If you scroll ahead just a bit more, there's an elevation as well showing the right there on the right um, is the proposed dormer with the roof deck on the top. And if you just scroll the screen down a little bit more, you'll see that there are large windows on the lowest level. That's the full walkout condition that leads to the rear patio of the yard. Okay. Um, Christian, you um, please tell us about GCOD. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, good morning. Christian Simonelli, Boston Brownwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair, we have those letters as well. Thank you. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. I think it, no questions. Uh, it's as uh, advertised, um, fairly simple. All the addition work is and toward the rear as well in terms of the, the back of the building. So no questions. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to defer to the board on this matter. We held an abutters meeting in March of 2022 where full support was uh, shown by the abutters as well as Union Park Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Odisha, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President's Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. We also received nine letters of support on this proposal. Thank you. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. Secretary here, we do have those letters of support. The mayor's office spoke of. Hey, Madam Chair, I have no one his hands. Thanks. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Calling the next case, calling VOA 130 8841 1 Beacon Street. This is to remove the proviso for this petitioner only <clears throat> for takeout use 36A, a new restaurant to be built out as new Salonki Greek restaurant. Violations Article 6, Section 4, to remove from the other conditions necessary for protection. Name and address for the record, please. Oh, I do see a raise in one second. No. Jonathan Mendez. Sorry, is that, are you here for this proposal? Correct. Okay, go ahead. Hi, ah, yes, uh, Jonathan Mendez, Chief Operating Officer, Saloniki Greek. So tell us what's being proposed. Um, I believe there is a zoning, um, zoning issue where there, it, it does not permit takeout uh, of any kind at this location. Uh, we are going into a second generation restaurant space that used to be the Capari uh, Grill um, on the corner of, I believe it's uh, Tremont, um, actually don't know the cross street, but it's at One Beacon, uh, that tower right there. It's a freestanding um, little building there uh, that was kind of iconic for a very long time. Uh, we are just, we're essentially the exact same type of restaurant or fast casual restaurant um, think of us kind of as a Greek Chipotle. Uh, and I'm sorry. So you have the who will, who will be running this this restaurant? Uh, we will. It's it's our company. This okay. will be our fourth location. Your fourth location in the city of Boston. Uh, second in the city of Boston, and the other two are in the city of Cambridge. And you have experience with takeout. Uh, yes, correct. We've been in business since 2016. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. Um, I know this space well. I did prepare it back in the day, so I uh, appreciate the challenges ahead of them in this space. Uh, so good luck with that. No questions on the proposed scope. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to defer to the board's judgment at this time. Um, we worked with the applicant to do some neighborhood outreach and we reached out to the Beacon Hill Civic Association um, who doesn't really oversee this jurisdiction in Beacon Hill. So at this time, we'd like to defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. 
Good morning, Madam Odisha, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President's Flames Office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands at the moment. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with a uh, typical takeout license, uh, uh, provisos and for this applicant only. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Calling the next case, calling DOA 124 455 523 Road. Road. This is to add a driveway adjacent to their home. The violation of Article 55, Section 40, R Street parking is insufficient, and Article 55, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Okay, this person is on. Okay, one second, Jeff. I sent the request to unmute you. Hi, Jeff, can you hear us? Okay, yeah, I can hear you now. Yep, I saw you, that you're on a couple of different uh, times. Uh, Jeffrey Messier, 23 Ifley Road. Apartment 2, Jamaica Plain Mass. I'm representing the owner of the home, Lorena Messer, and my mother. Okay, so tell us, is this a one family or a two family? This is actually a three family home. This is a three family. And tell us how uh, you are proposing to add the driveway. Um, so we already have a driveway. When my father bought the home back in, uh, I believe it was 1962, the driveway space already existed. However, there's no curb cut. So we would just like to be able to make a curb cut so that my mother and my aunt who's elderly can access the driveway since there's no street parking anymore. And is there street parking on this side of the street or no there's street parking at all? No, so there's street parking on both sides. However, it fills up ever since they built 4200 Washington Street. Um, all the street parking is occupied by 6 p.m. My mother and my aunt both work late nights. So when they come, they often have to park two or three blocks away from the house. Okay. Okay. Um, yep, the ripple effects of. Um, okay. So, um, how are the plans, uh, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the plans show the condition. It, it's very tight. I think it, its dimension is eight foot six clear at the at the house, um, which I think would be limited. There, there is retaining walls on both sides of the driveway and that is kind of there um, and a gate, but there's no curb cut. Okay. Mr. D'Amico? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair Lady and members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTV. Um, I feel bad, but the, um, the plan doesn't work. It's, it's much too narrow and there might be difficulty um, for uh, maneuverability in as well as out. And I, I as much as I feel bad, I'd have to request denial. If I, if I may, if I may, uh, if I may speak, the driveway is very big. I don't think the plan, the plans do the justification, but you can fit a Hummer in that driveway very easily. We we went through the approval process. No, 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 that's well. you know, I'm gonna say it's gonna it's fine if you can fit a Hummer in, but can you get a person in and out of the Hummer? Very easily. If you look at the Google images, um, the driveway is very big. We had a approval by the JP Zoning Committee. And no, no, no. The, the box stops with us, and so we need to really know, and, and we rely on Mr. D'Amico. If you submit us plans with dimensions, that's what we need to go with. And I think that the, just for clarification purposes, I yeah. think additionally the problem is we don't allow front yard parking. So there's not, there is plenty of space in the front yard, but I don't, I don't think there's enough space as you move the car into next to the building to allow for the size. So I understand what the proponent is saying, but I think the problem is we can't allow you to park in the front yard. That's not, that's not allowed. So hold on, hold on, um, Mr. Mestri. Um, the question is though, it looks like this driveway is limited by two retaining walls. Um, and so that's why I'm just wondering if this is at all doable for a homeowner who's been there a long time and who's now 
uh, impacted by by you know actions actions of approval of the other project. Um, and I I just toss it up. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? I mean, <laughs> looking at Google Maps, it look, this driveway extends all the way to the rear of the building. Um, you obviously can't tell what the, the width dimensions are on Google Maps, but it looks like it's a, it's a usable driveway. I, it's, um, I have to assume the dimensions that were given are correct, but I don't know. Okay. All, I mean, all, all they're looking for is a curb cut. They're not looking for, for the, the driveway's existing condition. Yep, okay. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition? Hi, yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tiffany Caballero here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Butters meeting was facilitated by our office on October 21st, 2021, with community support from neighborhood associations and Director Butters. Additionally, this folder received support from the Eggleston Square Neighborhood Association, the Brookside Neighborhood Association, and the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council Zoning Subcommittee. At this time, I don't have any letters of opposition. So in all the mayor's office would like to on record and defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Chairman of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at large, Michael Flaherty. Knowing of no uh, known opposition, the council would like to go on record and support. And Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve um, with BPA design review to uh, see if we can uh, make sure there's no front yard parking. Is there a second? Um, okay. And all a 10 foot curb cut, minimum curb cut. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck. Um, let's see, it's 11.30, uh, Mr. Fortune? Hold it to 11.30, Madam Chair. Uh, shall we do deferrals and then take a break? Sure, we can do that. I'm going to call the 11.30 for rediscussions. Any deferrals or withdrawals? You can give me the 20, address, please. 20 Hinkley Street. Thank you. For the record, calling DOA 125 8638 20 Hinkley Street. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. We are seeking an administrative deferral. Um, at the last hearing, uh, we did get our plans in immediately. Uh, we were notified by the ZBA board that, uh, secretary, that um, they did not get the refusal letter back in time and had to be uh, ties with correct and new violations. So uh, we would seek an administrative deferral. Is there a motion? Uh, motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries the date, please. We'll have a date of July 12th at 1130. Thank you very much. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the rediscussions at 1130? OK. The meeting, the Board meeting is now adjourned until 11.50. Recording stopped.
You're muted, Madam Chair. Thank you for the reminder. Um, the meeting for uh, the Board of Appeal meeting for uh, May 10th is back in session. Uh, Mr. Fortune. I call the continuation of the 1030 cases. Filing case BOA 1310 I'm sorry. Case BOA 124 3853 7A to 7B Jones Avenue. This is a finished abasement. There's two new bedrooms and unit and change of architecture from a two to three family dwelling. The violation is Article 60, Section 9. The floor to air ratio is excessive. Article 60, Section 9, the usual open space is insufficient. Article 60, Section 60 9, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 60, Section 8. The dwelling unit is forbidden in the basement, and Article 60, Section 37, Osprey parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Milton Santos, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, the only is looking for to turn, looking to you know, turn that uh, basement, this unfinished basement, into a two bedrooms uh, units like um, we wish we see on the on the um, drawing. And uh, very much is the second is a two family house uh, with a really nice high basement unfinished. That is what they are looking for. Okay, so tell us about the floor to ceiling height in that basement. Tell us about the floor to sill height in the bedrooms. Um, and tell us about how, if, if utilities are separated. Yeah, all the utilities are going to be separated and going to be uh, relocating the existing ones now and then they're going to be by the back of the unit um, on the basement. Uh, the, the ceiling height, all the ceiling height, I don't have that exactly with me, but it's over eight feet on an entire uh, basement, bedrooms uh, everywhere. And as you see, you can see uh, ingress windows for those bedrooms and uh, another um, separate entrance for the basement units. Um, and what's the floor to sell height? Uh, that is, I don't have that with me, but that is all I know it's over eight feet. Floor to sell height to window sill height? Oh, uh, the, the front window sill height is going to be 40, um, 30, 38 or 40, between 38 and 40 inches. Okay, and then, um, where, uh, where is, is there a driveway on this property? There is a driveway on this side and on uh, the right side of the house, if we are in front of the house, there is a driveway, a uh, long driveway. And, uh, and we have you know, this, a lot of space on the back, in the backyard, um, or to create, you know, uh, like uh, six, 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 cars on, on the back already, and uh, on the side of the house, there are only three cars that we can see. Okay, and the bedrooms, do the window, the windows, the um, open onto the driveway, or where do they open onto? On the opposite side. Okay. Um, Mr. Robinson, it's not yet one. But um, I'm going to ask your help on this. How are the plans? Um, <clears throat> the the yeah, I think this is we're running into a similar issue with that we've had. It, the height in the basement's dimensioned as seven feet. Um, it does show two foot six, but they are basically showing area wells um, for the bedroom units, and there's no really other windows uh, available to the natural light for this unit below grade. And we have to recognize that in this zoning district, the the um, let's see, the dwelling unit is a forbidden use in the basement. And in addition, the applicant is asking, even though there are already two units, um, uh, for a variance from the parking requirement. Correct. 
Okay. Um, let's just see. And it's two means of egress and everything? They do have the two means of egress covered because um, they're adding a stair to the left side front um, to gain access to this as a separate unit. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I'm a little confused about the uh, floor to ceiling height. Um, the applicant apparently has, has stated that it was eight feet, but Mr. Robinson said it was seven foot one, shown in the drawings. And if he wants to turn this from a two to a three family, the code requires that there be a minimum of seven foot six. So at least if we are saying that the plans are accurate, this is uh, not code compliant. Right. Okay. This looks like relatively new construction. It, it probably was before us before. Uh, Tom, can you confirm whether this project was before this board? Hi, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm looking into it. I'll let you know when I find any records. Thank you. Any other questions before? Uh, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Uh, yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board, Dante Peoples for the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office is elected to defer to the board on this matter. The applicant had met with the Woodrow Ave Neighborhood Association on February 17th, where residents had shown concerns around the property being purchased through the Neighborhood Homes Initiative, as there may be program or deed restrictions on the property. However, the property seems to have been purchased through the program at market rate. Um, there were also issues around, um, concerns around parking, the off street parking aspect of the project. Um, there was also a meeting run by, an abutters meeting run by the Office of Neighborhood Services on March 21st, 2022, where the port was owned by an abutter, but there was also parking concerns um, in regards to the small lot size and the driveway that uh, we spoke about. Um, the mayor's office did receive a support petition with names, a support petition with names of abutters that the applicant submitted to the board, um, as well as I sent over to the board, um, as well as an, um, another letter of support from another butter, director butter. Um, the Greater Matter Pan Neighborhood Council had opposed the proposal and sent in a letter to the, to the board, um, citing that they don't feel the drawings uh, reflect what is being proposed, and as they may be from 2017, so it may not be accurate. Um, they also feel that the applicant should apply through the additional dwelling unit program instead of filing for a variance, and wanted to state that they um, that the neighborhood council is opposed to variances for basement units. Um, I don't believe the Woodrow Avenue Woodrow Ave Neighborhood Association sent in a letter, but they do echo the uh, sentiments of <clears throat> um, concerns of some of others as well as a greater amount of neighborhood council. Again, the mayor's also would like to defer to the defer to the board on this matter. Thank you. Madam Chair, this is Tom. Uh, it looks like the, the property was built in 2017 as of right, so it comes before the board. Thank you. Was it part of the Neighborhood Homes Initiative? No, hold on, hold on, Mr. Ehrlich. Let's just find out if anybody else um, wants oh, to give yeah. a testimony. Okay, we okay. go ahead. Hi, we do. So I'll be calling from the District Four City Council's office. Um, I did want to just speak and say that we are not in support of this project due to all the various reasons and on. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I uh, have the additional raised hands. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering whether it's, uh, the, the issue was raised about whether it's part of the Neighborhood Homes Initiative and whether there are deed restrictions. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich, this is Tom. Uh, according to the permit application, it is a part of the Neighborhood Homes Initiative, but I, I don't know of any deed restrictions on the property. I'm going to have to look that up in the registry. Okay. So the Neighborhood Homes Programs comes with their pre, pre-designed building, yeah. right? And those don't look very, um, well, so anyway, so uh, and they are already constructed and proposed to provide income to the homeowner for to provide income to the homeowner. So I don't know what this means uh, trying to move these from two to three families plus the basement use. Okay, so given all that information, may I have a motion, please? I'm going to make a motion to deny. Is there a second? 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm sorry, uh, it's been denied. Good luck. <clears throat> Calling the next case. Calling DOA 131 29 Hamilton Street is a four-story building designed for seniors age 62 and older. First floor with community room, lobby, game room, management office, meeting space, total over a thousand square feet. One bicycle space per two units indoors on the ground level. One motor vehicle space for three per three units in the garage and the building total of 36. The violations Article 65, Section 8, elderly housing use is forbidden. Article 65, Section 42, conforming with existing building alignment. Article 65, Section 9, the floor air ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. All right. Sorry, I have two raised hands here. Sean or Ashley, are you on for this case? Sean Breer, sorry, I needed to uh, unmute myself. Thank you. Are you okay? Are you here for this proposal? I am. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Jessica, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, Attorney Sean Breer of the law firm of Hackett Feinberg, 155 Federal Street, Boston, appearing before you on behalf of the project sponsor, uh, Vietnamese American Initiative for Development, Inc. Uh, with me on the panel this morning uh, is Eric Fellinger, the Director of Real Estate Development for Viet Aid, as well as our project architects, uh, Cliff Bomer and Amelia Mamani, both of Davis Square Architects. Uh, the purpose of this appeal is to seek zoning relief for the development of three parcels located in the Dorchester neighborhood, the SF 6000 uh, subdistrict. Uh, I'm sorry, what was, what's the zoning district? SF 6000. I'm sorry? SF 6000. Okay. Madam Chair, 2F. 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 Sorry. Okay, sorry. 2F 6000. I apologize. Yes, and what's the size of the, the lot, the total lot size? Total lot will be 19,359 square feet. Okay, go ahead. Go, sorry, go ahead with your presentation. No problem. Uh, the three parcels are 25 Hamilton, 29 Hamilton, and 33 Hamilton. Uh, again, the aggregate size, 19,359 square feet. Uh, Viet Aid is a nonprofit developer with a mission to build strong, vibrant, and diverse communities in so, Dorchester. So, so Councillor, Councillor, can you go ahead just and tell us about the proposal? Because sure. the bulk of us know about Viet Aid, um, and so we just need to understand uh, this proposal. No problem. Uh, the uh, proposal is to develop the redevelop the site into much needed affordable housing consisting of 36 one bedroom residential depart, uh, apartments for seniors 62 and older. There will be associated community room, lobby, game room, management office and meeting space, as well as an outdoor courtyard, 2000 square feet and 13 off street parking spaces located uh, on the ground level underneath the building. Uh, the project's construction does require um, some uh, a set of uh, zoning relief from this board, including uh, elderly housing being a forbidden use. Um, the application uh, or conformity with the existing building alignment, uh, the applicant is seeking a variance uh, to demolish the existing building and construct a new four story building, which does not comply with the existing building alignment. Uh, we have excessive floor ratio uh, of 1.9. Um, there's excessive building height and building stories and insufficient rear yard. The uh, proposal. Uh, so let's 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 just back up for a minute. Um, so how large are the proposed units? Each unit. Um, defer that question to Eric uh, and or uh, Davis Square to answer the yes. size of each particular unit. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Eric Fellinger, Viet Aid. Um, the project is funded through, in part through the Boston uh, Mayor's Office of Housing, and we are meeting their minimum size requirements of, I believe it's at least 610 square feet.
for a one bedroom unit. 610 square feet, okay. And are these all going to be affordable or is there a certain percentage that's gonna be affordable? They are 100% affordable. Uh, 20 of the units will be restricted to 60% AMI and below, seven of them to 50% AMI and the remaining nine at 30% AMI. So it's 60 to 30% AMI? That is correct. Okay. And tell us about um, when your residents age in place, what is the drop-off pickup point um, for, for this building? Uh, is thank there, you, Is Chair. there an off-street proposal uh, for that? There is off-street. We are designing the subsurface parking garage to accommodate an SSTA van, and there will be elevator access to that level. There will also be a uh, parking space. We intend to work with uh, Boston Traffic to sign the space on street immediately in front of the building as a 15 minute space so that an SSTA van may stop there to make uh, pickups conveniently. And how many um, staff people are you anticipating in this building? We anticipate perhaps one full-time staff at the most, but okay. uh, most of the community services will be delivered on an, on, you know, an as needed basis with and providers able to park below the building or on street. Okay, so the 13 spaces are both for residents and for um, for residents and for um, for staff. Uh, that is correct. Okay, and tell us, so there's one bicycle unit, one bicycle space for two units and one par uh, garage space for, for three units. That's correct. Okay, any roof deck proposed? No, ma'am. No, okay. Um, but as you'll see in the renderings, we have a substantial amount of the front yard dedicated as outdoor um, space for use by the residents. As you had said, there's 2,000 square feet, right? Uh, approximately. Yeah, okay. Um, and then how many of these units are handicapped? Um, Cliff or Amanda, yeah. can you confirm? Yes, this is Cliff Bomer. I'm a principal at Davis Square Architects. We're exceeding uh, MAAB requirements and, in fact, exceeding MOH requirements. Four of the units, which is 11% of the units, will be Group 2 level units. All of the other units in the building will be Group 1 uh, adaptable units. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, <clears throat> plans are good. I think it's uh, a nice plan. Fits in pretty nicely. The, the slope of the uh, site is, I think, well um, sort of taken care of in terms of the front yard courtyard. So, um, and the proposal is, is as uh, proponents have uh, submitted and with no roof deck. So, no, no real questions. It, it looks like a, a nice proposal for the neighborhood. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I have uh, one question. I mean, it certainly seems like a worthy proposal. Uh, it seems a little bit out of context with the neighborhood. I look I'm looking at Google Maps at Hamilton Street, and it's mostly two and three family, two and three decker, two and three family homes. Uh, this would be a significantly different use of the space, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, and we'd just like to hear the proponent talk about that. Uh, sure, happy to. Um, we acknowledge that point. We do think that the building fits in extremely nicely with the uh, existing architecture, uh, despite, as you point out, the, um, the difference in scope. We have done a, an extensive community meeting process. We've had no, four but please, of meetings. Please, yes, ma'am. Sorry, please answer Mr. Ehrlich's question about context. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Well, in terms of neighborhood support, we have brought that point to the neighbors and they are accepting of it. In terms of the building itself, let me hand it back to, to Cliff to discuss that. Uh, I, I thank you very much for that comment. I wanted to point out a few things about the existing context. It, it is indeed true that there are many, many, uh, three families there, but it is important to note that most of those three families, if not all of them, do have uh, stairways leading up to their entry level and floor to floor heights that are uh, equal or greater than our building. So in fact, the, the height of our building really isn't that much greater than context. 
The, how the much, how much, has, sorry, how much greater is it? Well, we're, they, we're, we're facing the street that you can see in the rendering to the left. That's at 43 feet. Our, tall, our, our highest, our roof level on the street is 43 feet. Nearby buildings, they, they aren't the same, but they range anywhere from 35 to 40 feet. When, once you count the uh, stairways up into the um, uh, up into the entry level, I did. I think the important thing to understand about the massing was that we put the the biggest massing of the building is furthest away from the street. So the slope of uh, from Hamilton it goes down towards the south, where we have a lot of space and distance from neighbors. So it's an L-shaped building that really just shows the, the small elevation uh, immediately facing the street. And then the taller part because of the slope is in the back, uh, minimizing its impact. So we did work hard with both BPDA and MOH to develop this massing that we think is really minimally impactful. Um, I would also point out that when you do, uh, Google Earth is a great tool for looking at this, the, the actual intensity of use of the site while we are asking for a variance for FAR, uh, most of the surrounding sites are very small sites with uh, very little distance between the buildings uh, with existing FARs that often are, are well above 1.0. And what is your, this proposed uh, um, FAR? I, I don't remember, frankly. Is it one point? One point nine. One point nine. Okay. Just like to applaud the the increase in affordable housing, which is much needed in the city, and and the nice use of open space. We don't see that typically. And I think the next question is, um, I know this is a Viet, Viet A development. Is it going to be open to the public in general? Uh, of course, ma'am, through the typical um, Boston Fair Housing managed lottery process for affordable units. Okay. Um, let's see, any more questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Denise DeSantos from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I would like to go on record and state that the applicant has done a couple different community meetings as well as met with the Neighborhood Association. They have support from the Neighborhood Association. Some of butters were concerned around density. At this time, our office would like to defer any comments to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Councilor Frank Baker's office would like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at large, Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record in support. Madam Chair. Hello, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Izzy Slater, and I'm here on behalf of City Councilor at Large, Lucy Lijen. Uh, our office would like to go on record in support of the project. Okay. Uh, uh, Madam, Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have letters of support. Okay, thank you. Ma Madam Chair, members of the board, Christopher Rooney, Mayor's Office of Housing, 12 Channel Street, Boston. MOH is in full support of this affordable senior housing project. Thank you. Mr. Rooney, I'd be surprised if you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> we put our money where our mouths are. Okay, let's let's move on. Yep, go ahead, Sean. You've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? That that was uh, Sean Greer asking to be. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. okay. Oh. Sorry. Okay. As Asley, you've been unmuted. Hi, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. For the record, my name is Asa Ersem from Boston City Councilor at Large, Julia Mejia's office, and we would like to go on record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Okay. 
I Madam, as I may, Davida Andelman. Oh, okay. uh, Here we oh, go. Oh, Davida, are you there? Great. Yeah, yeah. Late, late for another meeting. Uh, Davida Andelman, 94 Clarkson Street. Uh, I live actually a block and a half away from this project. I'm chair of the Greater Bowdoin Geneva Neighborhood Association. Uh, VAD has gone above and beyond uh, what they needed to do in terms of engaging the community. Uh, all the concerns, interests, and recommendations of the community uh, have been taken into consideration and have been respected. So we hope you will uh, support this project. Thank you very much. Okay. And I have no additional. Oops, sorry. I have four various things on the panelist side. Oh, go ahead, Mina. Thank you, Madam Ambassador, Madam Chair, members of the Board of Minor Forest representing the Carpenters Union. On behalf of hundreds of our members that live in Dorchester, I want to go on record and support. Okay. And um, Rochelle? Hi, all. Uh, Rochelle Santana, yeah. State Representative Liz Miranda's office. Our, off our office would like to go on record in full support of the project. And we have also offered a letter of support as well. Thank you. Okay, BJ? Hi, B. Joe Swalu from District 4 City Councilor Brian Royal's office. Uh, the office would like to go on record giving its full support for this project. Thank you. Thanks. Um, excellent. Um, I was just having some technical difficulties, so I did not see the proposed building. Does, does it need design review? Uh, Yes, no, ma'am, we will be engaged with. No, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the board members. Sorry. Yes, I, I think it, it will go through its final design review. Yes. I okay, agree. so may I have a motion, please? A motion to approve a BPDA design review. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, so you're all set with that proviso. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, thank, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Calling the next case, Colin BOA 129 1466, 1644 Dorchester Avenue. This is a demolished existing structure, erected a three story, eight unit residential building with garage and front and side roof decks. The violation of Article 65, Section 38, this is specific design requirements for street wall continuity in certain sub districts. Article 65, Section 9, the floor to air ratio is excessive, and Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I represent Eddie O'Driscoll with respect to the property. My client and the project architect, Tim Johnson, are here with us today. What is being proposed is the replacement of an existing two and a half story building with a new three story building containing eight residential units. The existing building has been used for different purposes over the years, including a funeral home, a church, and as a two-family dwelling. The lot size is 9,304 square feet, and it's located in a multifamily residential local services zoning district. The ground floor here would consist of a garage for 10 vehicles, which meets code requirements. It would also include the main building entrance on Dorchester Avenue. The garage entrance for an existing curb cut will be reconfigured in accordance with city regulations as to size, as well as a bicycle room, mail room, unit storage, three stop elevated, elevated conform to accessibility requirements and utility rooms. The second and third floors would each contain four two bedroom units ranging in size from 1,070 to 1,228 square feet. The roof would feature four centrally located 12 by 12 roof decks, one for each of the third floor units. Access would be provided by hatch. With respect to the zoning, Madam Chair members, the building is nearly zoning compliant. The zoning refusal letter cites three violations. There's a violation for excessive floor area ratio. The maximum FAR here is one. What is being proposed is an FAR of 1.029. So that's 29 one thousandths above the maximum FAR of one. Another violation is for street wall continuity. Because this is an MFRLS zoning subdistrict, the code would actually require the building to have less of a front yard setback in order to be in alignment uh, with the prevailing alignment on the street, which is set by the commercial building a block away at the corner of Center Street. Our client believes it is much more appropriate to have a generous front yard setback, such as what is being proposed. Finally, there's a violation for insufficient rear yard setback. The rear setback requirement here is 30 feet, while the proposed setback varies from a minimum of six feet at two points where the building jogs 
but 12 to 18 feet for much of the rest of the building. And I would know for the record that the setback of the existing building at its nearest point to the rear lot line is also approximately six feet. With that, Madam Chair, we'll pause and take any questions that members may have. So, out of, um, so I understand that the, the existing building may be closer to the property line. However, it's a less impactful building. What is, is, is that the best that the applicant can do? How, what is the distance between the uh, furthest rear yard line and the abutting property? I'll ask Tim Johnson if he has a measurement on the abutting building in the rear. Uh, Tim, uh, do you have a, a distance for that? Not the distance, of course, to this rear property line, but to the building in the back. I think. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, George. Uh, Madam Chair, Tim Johnson, the project architect. Uh, these would be two buildings uh, directly behind us on Elm Lawn Street, number eight and number 10, <clears throat> who have, we have worked closely with. Uh, their rear yard setbacks, although I don't have an exact dimension, Madam Chair, I am going to uh, estimate approximately 10 to 12 feet to their rear portion of their rear of their house. So in total then, with your 6 to 12 feet and their 12 feet, there should be um, a decent amount of separation then? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Also, we uh, worked closely with the rear abutters. We generated shadow studies, and with the proposed building facing. No, I get it. I get it. My concern is that you know how are we impacting their rights in the future? You know, by by having these buildings so close mm -hmm. to the property line, mm -hmm. or this proposed building so close to the property line. Yeah. And that's why we, uh, we jogged the uh, rear of the uh, building, Madam Chair, so we wouldn't have one straight facade um, facing the rear butters. And how is this design contextual uh, for Dorchester Ave? Well, firstly, um, mostly it's uh, uh, three stories. The majority of the buildings along this area are three-story buildings. Uh, also, uh, the fenestration, all the windows will be proportioned at a two to one ratio. Uh, we'll be using a very standard uh, exterior siding, which is clapboard. Uh, we also are showing bay windows, which are predominant along this side of uh, this stretch of Dorchester Ave. And the main entry area uh, is recessed uh, with front decks supported by columns posting all the way down to the ground. Again, another feature of the triple deckers and the Second Empire Victorian buildings along this street section. Okay. Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, Secretary, I got a question for Mr. Rancy. Was this project before us before? Mr. Fortune, uh, George Rancy speaking. Uh, there was a, a larger project, a nine unit project, that was uh, denied without prejudice by the board in April of 2021. Uh, I was not involved in that project, and it was a different applicant. Okay, it, was look, it looked familiar. That's why like obviously fresh on my mind. Thank you. Yes. And um, Mr. Johnson, are the bays on the property or over the sidewalk? Uh, no, Madam Chair, the bays are on the property. Excellent. Okay. Um, Mr. Robinson, how are the plans? Um, plans are, are fine. Um, they're good. I, I think it's, it is consistent with the street. Obviously, it's a little bit more of a contemporary take. I, I do appreciate the bays and the decks on the front um, as you face Dorchester Avenue. And I think based on what it looks like, they're trying to you know, mitigate any impact on the rear butters to the best of their ability. Um, so I, in terms of the proposal, I really don't have any other questions. Um, what's being proposed? Thank you. Um, is this proposed to be a lead building or lead certified in any way? Uh, this is Tim Johnson again. Uh, no, ma'am, this won't be uh, lead certified. However, it will be uh, 100 percent electrified for heating, cooling, uh, and cooking. Uh, there will be no fossil fuels coming into this building. Of course, it will be built to the stretch energy code, which is 20 percent more energy efficient than current code. Can you speak to the landscaping on this site? Uh, the landscaping, uh, we have, firstly, with the rear butters, working with fencing in the rear uh, and planting 
uh, deciduous trees strategically placed along the rear of the property. We do not have a landscape plan per se, uh, but we hope to generate one during VPDA design review. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Any other questions from the board? Okay, is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Quinn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted an abutters meeting for the project on March 1st. Uh, some neighbors expressed concern about setbacks, privacy, and shade, for which the proponent performed a shadow study. The March Area Civic Association voted in support of the proposal. However, some immediate abutters have since changed their minds. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Um, do you have any idea what, what caused that the change of heart on, with abutters? Um, from my understanding, it was um, a couple of the most immediate abutters expressing some concern after the vote with density and with um, sort of um, effect on their view and uh, the shadow study. Um, but that's kind of, the Civic Association pretty much followed suit with what that immediate butters, what those uh, couple of immediate butters wanted. Um, and since those um, few folks changed their minds, um, you know, that's kind of what happened there. Got it, okay. Anybody else <clears throat> to speak on this project? Madam Chair, Secretary, we do have letters of opposition. And, um, uh, and Mr. Fortune, what is the opposition made? Uh, they were opposed to the project when it was nine units. They're still opposed to it as eight project as a eight unit. Okay. Okay, and Madam Chair, I do have two raised hands. Second, so uh, start with Ethel. You've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, Ethel. Okay. This is Doug. Hello. Hi, Doug. Yep. Can you say your name and address for the record, Doug? Yes. My name is Doug Hurley. I'm speaking on behalf of my mother, uh, Agnes B. Hurley, 79 years old, that doesn't understand the internet, at 15 Penhallow Street, which is about uh, eight homes away from this project. Okay. Um, and is in support or in opposition of this proposal? Opposition. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with this project. I'm the former president of the St. Mark's Area Civic Association. Um, you know, you guys were nice enough to decline this project as a nine unit uh, project. Not much has changed since one less project. The owner immediately started to try to uh, gain support after your denial uh, in the past and uh, he intends to sell this project only if you approve it. If you approve this, he will sell it to the current applicant. If you deny it, the deal is dead. So the project to me is ugly, it's too big, it's too close to the neighbors. Um, regarding the fence, the neighbor already has a brand new fence that they put in two years ago. It's, it's just, it, it's not a good project for my neighborhood. Thank you. Yeah. I have no additional raised hands at the moment. Um, Madam Chair, uh, may I speak, George Morancy? Yep. Oh, hold on. Just, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just want to reiterate again, just in terms of the zoning, um, this is essentially zoning compliant with respect to density, floor area ratio. There's no height violation. There's no uh, front yard setback violation in terms of this building not being set back far enough, nor side yard violations. Uh, what we're really looking at here is a rear yard violation where the building is no closer. It is wider along the lot, uh, but it's no closer than the existing building at two points. But most of this building is, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 feet away from the rear lot line. Uh, and again, there's no height violation. And we did go through the exercise of producing shadow studies, showing that there are no appreciable shadows to be cast on the buildings in the rear. So again, with the uh, with the, uh, the conforming building height, um, you know, the, uh, this would be. I mean, it's it's, it's virtually zoning compliance. Okay. 
I'll, I'll just end there. Okay. Um, so given all that information, um, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion um, <clears throat> to approve with BPDA design review. Um, I think uh, for an extensive landscaping plan. Um, also, I think I appreciate the proponents pulling back from Dorchester Avenue, but obviously when pulling back, you're encroaching a little bit more on Elm Lawn Street. So I think if the BPDA could look at the siting of the building in general, um, and then just a general design review um, for the, uh, the exterior uh, materials. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Following, next, following the next case, calling BOA 130 6820 175 Milton Street. <coughs> Scope of work includes reframing the roof, interior gut renovation, and in addition to the existing single family. Violation of Article 65, Section 41. Our street parking loading, Article 65, Section 9, the lot area is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the Floridia ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz with the business address of 350 West Broadway, South Boston. Are here with me today is Dennis Greenwood, the architect from Sousa Design, on behalf of the owners, Jonathan and Laura Lenahan. So this, as, as stated into the record, this is a proposal to create additional living space into an existing single family dwelling uh, within a 1F 5000 subdistrict. The proposal is gonna consist to raise the roof line with the Gambrel structure addition while maintaining the existing look and character of the neighborhood. This will allow more access to a living area and it will provide an additional 620 square feet of livable space. The first floor uh, will add a new covered porch with an additional 10 feet of square, square feet addition to widen the actual entranceway. The porch will be approximately about 25 feet wide and about seven feet, uh, I mean 20, 25 feet long, seven feet wide. There will also be an 88 square foot addition to the left side of the house to match the footprint of the building. In the rear of the property, there will be a five, an 11 and a half foot rear deck that will be added. Uh, the additional square face will, uh, the square footage would increase by 98 square feet, accumulating to approximately 1,199 square feet for the first floor plan. Second floor plan, uh, there will be a new bay window um, on the front of the house that will add an additional 13 square feet. Further, the proposal will raise the, it, it raise the footprint to the second floor with a rear addition by 77 square feet. Total square footage for the second floor plan will now result in 892 square feet. Uh, there also will be, currently there is a livable space in the basement. Uh, the basement will also be excavated to include uh, the existing building footprint on the left-hand side, which will add an additional 118 square feet uh, to, the, to the property to create more additional living space. The total square footage of the basement will now be 568 uh, square feet. What uh, is the proposed use of the basement? So the proposed use of the basement is just gonna be an increase in additional living space in here. Uh, we could find that on page uh, six of the plans there, uh, give you a little bit more um, insight on, on what it is. Uh, again, currently right Wait, now. And what's the total size of the addition? Because so it's so the total for all the additions or just for the the basement. All the additions. Nine hundred and twenty nine square feet. So right now the existing property is at two thousand three hundred fifty three square feet, and so the total what's being proposed is at thirty two seventy nine. Um, the FAR is already non conforming. Uh, what's required by the code is a point five. Uh, what is existing is a point five two. This would increase the FAR to a point seven three. Can you um, please, who, who's up? I'm, I'm sorry, whoever's running the screen, can you move back a couple of pages so we can see the basement plan? Thank you. And that would be on page, uh, page six. Page six. Oh, okay. So that's, what, what is that use in the basement? Is it a family it is, room? 
what yes, it? correct. Yes, there is a family room in the basement. So as you can see where the red area there is in the basement, that will be the additional square footage that will be excavated out just to uh, match the existing footprint of the building. So that again, that will be uh, excavated out. We approximately have eight foot uh, ceiling height in the basement. And sorry, are there any bedrooms down there? No, no bedrooms, Madam no, Chair. Is there a kitchen down there? No kitchen, Madam Chair. Okay. But there is, so, a, there is a bathroom down there. Got it. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. I think it's, uh, you know, it's a, a lot of little uh, ads here and there to, it looks like, increase usability. Uh, no questions. And the proposal in the basement is an extension of a family room, it looks like, for a little bit of more seating area. But nothing other than that. I think, no Any questions. Qu any questions from the board? Just a, com a comment. The hedges are beautifully trimmed on Google Maps. <laughs> Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal or in opposition? Madam Chair, members of the board, George Wing with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office hosted an abutters meeting for the proposal on March 30th. We received no concerns from the community or the Cedar Grove Civic Association. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachran, City Council of Frank Baker's office, would like to go on record and support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, for City Council of Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record and support. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of support as well. Okay. Um, we do have a raised hand here, uh, one second. Uh, Dennis Greenwood? You've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address for the market, please? Hi, this is Dennis Greenwood. I'm actually the, the architect for the product. I was just raising oh. my hand in case there's any questions. Oh, my apologies. Okay. I have no additional raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Uh, motion over. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? A motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Calling your next case, calling DOA 130 9530 61 Pierce Avenue. This is extend the existing driveway to the rear of the property and add six parking spaces at the rear, adding new retaining wall. The violation of Article 9, Section 1, extension of a non conforming use, Article 10, Section 1, limitation of parking areas, and Article 65, Section 8, accessory parking to an existing is a forbidden use, is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Moranti. I'm an attorney with the business address at 350 West Broadway in South Boston. My client is Kevin Borum. He purchased 61 Pierce Avenue last June and has been renovating it since that time within zoning requirements. The building is an existing three-family dwelling. It is in a 2F5000 zoning subdistrict, so it is a lawful non-conforming use. The proposal is to add an area in the rear yard for six parking spaces. The spaces would be 9.7 feet by 18 and a half feet, and the parking area will be accessed by an uh, already existing curb cut and the driveway, which meets uh, minimum width requirements. Cited zoning violations are a bit um, esoteric, actually. One is for extension of a non-conforming use. Uh, it would be my position that this is cited incorrectly. Uh, the non-conforming use here is the existing three-family dwelling, uh, but the use is not being extended. Uh, we're merely proposing to add parking. Parking is an accessory use. Plans examiner also cited a conditional violation for the parking since it is accessory to a non-conforming use rather than a conforming use. Well, this is not technically incorrect uh, in over 30 years of so, practice, so I've never so actually on. seen it cited. Hold on, Mr. Moranzi. So can you give us details um, and um, tell us about the driveway? What's the size of that driveway? What's the size uh, it, of that driveway? At its minimum point, it's 10 feet wide. Okay. So it, 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 it conforms, uh, it conforms with, uh, with code and BTD regulations for a residential driveway. And uh, is there parking on that side of the street? It, it's an existing curb cut. Uh, there is parking, but it's an existing curb cut. This isn't new. In fact, it would probably be reduced uh, uh, to be uh, you know less wide than it is now. It, it would certainly be no no more than uh, uh, you know a ten foot wide curb cut, 12, 12 uh, feet at the flares. But it is existing. It's been there for many years. 
And this, the other question is, what is the material to be used uh, for that driveway, is it is it going to be pervious or impervious materials? Uh, I guess, Madam Chair, that uh, were this to be approved, um, my assumption because of screening and buffering requirements, it would be with BPDA design review, uh, in which case um, I would suggest the BPDA would dictate uh, what kind of materials would be used in, uh, you know, in terms of the, uh, the paving of the parking area. But I would suggest, oh, I, sorry, I would state that uh, over 40% of the of the site that is unoccupied by the existing building uh, would be uh, would be a green space, uh, landscape open space. There's no usable open space violation being created. And in uh, response to some current concerns at the abutters meeting, um, my client assured that the uh, existing shade trees in the rear of the site will be maintained, uh, and he provided an updated landscape drawing showing privacy screening fencing mulch bed uh, shrubberies unfortunately because of the two week requirement in terms of submitting updated plans to get them before the board on the hearing date uh, we weren't able to get the, uh, the the updated landscaping plan before the board today but it has been produced okay how are the plans mr robinson uh plans are good no questions and it appears as uh the council's uh out Blind. I, I no issues. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Madam Chair, members of the board, George Flynn with the Mayor's Office of Newport Services. Our office hosted an abutters meeting for the proposal on November 29th, 2021. The opponent has since made changes to the walls around the lot in order to block headlights from abutting backyards. The local civic organizations had no concerns. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, John McEachern, City Council, and Frank Baker's office would like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at large, Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record in support. Hi, Bob, go ahead. Uh, yes, Bob Domingo, Boston Transportation Department. Uh, Madam Chair, ladies, members of the board, I'd like to request that spaces three and four uh, be removed for imp uh, improved maneuverability and to allow for proper screening and buffering. Thank you. Okay. Raise hand, um, caller 617233. Send a request to unmute you. Go ahead. Hello? I'm sorry, did you call me Michelle Bird? Yeah. Yep. Hi, yes. can you state your name? Um, can I just for the record, please? Michelle Bird, and I live at 6567 Pierce Avenue in Dorchester. It's the property abutting 61 Pierce Avenue. And I appreciate, uh, I was at the abutters meeting back in November and did raise a concern about there being no fencing to provide for screening and um, uh, muffling down at that time. And I understand that a proposal has been made to add some sort of screening to the west side of the property that abuts my property um, to deal with that. But since I have a plan not available, I would have to defer uh, to your uh, committee on that. Thank you. But I, Okay, thank you. Um, let me just um, see, um, uh, Mr. Hampton. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Jeff Hampton, BPDA. Uh, we went on the record uh, recommending denial of this. We echo the sentiments of uh, Bob D'Amico and BTD uh, that six spaces are too many in the backyard. Madam Chair, uh, George Marancia, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, just in response to Mr. D'Amico and, and BBDA, um, I did have a conversation with Mr. D'Amico about the two proposed parking spaces in question. Uh, for those two spaces, the central ones, uh, the concern is that uh, they are nearer than the other spaces to a, a rear porch structure. The distance between the rear wall, uh, the rear of the parking space, and the, and the rearmost space of the porches is 33 and a half feet. Um, 
uh, Ford Explorer is about 16 and a half feet long, which means that there's a distance of an entire vehicle length to make the turn in and out of those two parking spaces for a large SUV, um, you know, never mind a smaller car. And I also do have to point out something that is not evident from the site plan, which is that the base of the porch structure uh, is actually poured concrete, uh, which varies from uh, about one foot to three feet above grade. And that is what is supporting the porch structure. And I have one last question. What's the height of the retaining walls? The, uh, the retaining walls on the site are, are uh, uh, three to four feet. I'm, I'm not certain, but they're, they're right. obviously code. Yeah, they're, they're nothing that, that violates uh, code requirements. They're approximately three to four feet uh, thereabouts. Okay, thank you. Um, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a uh, motion to approve with uh, BPDA design review for screening and buffering and with BTD review for maneuverability. So screening and buffer, maneuverability, and can we uh, look at previous materials? Sure. Sure. Um, is there a second? Second, Mayor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So you're all set with those providers. Good luck. Thank you. Call me next case, calling VOA 1310370, 389 to Ponset Avenue. This is a change of offer to include an ice cream shop on the first floor with basement storage. The violations Article 65, Section 15, restaurant with takeout, small is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Board, Attorney John Fulgini, uh, 10 Forbes Road and Braintree on behalf of the applicant. Um, so this is 389 Deposit Ave in Dorchester. It's located in the Deposit Business District. The zoning in this district is local convenience. As Mr. Fortune stated, this proposal is to create an ice cream shop in the existing commercial building. This will be a uh, subdivision of existing space with the, uh, this side is an ice cream shop. The other side in the future will hopefully be a yoga studio. Uh, formerly, this was a very large dentist office. As he stated- that. I love that, going from yoga to ice cream. Okay. <laughs> One after the other, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, the only violation is the conditional use of small takeout. The use as an ice cream shop is an allowed use, uh, and there will also be no manufacturing of ice cream on site. As far as programming, the retail space will be approximately 586 uh, square feet. Uh, egress at side and front, all entrances are handicap accessible. There will be a side service window in the alleyway to the left of the space. There will be an accessible bathroom and the basement will be uh, only for mechanical use and storage. And there will be approximately 797 square feet of storage and mechanical space of 365 square feet. And how will deliveries occur? So there's a, an alleyway where, where the deliveries can be done. Okay, uh, through alleyway, okay. And the name of the business? Uh, Lazy Bear Ice Cream, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, how are the plans, um, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good, no question. Uh, look forward to it coming to the neighborhood. <laughs> any, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Wynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighbor Services. Our office has heard no concerns from the community. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe McEachern, City Council, and Frank Baker's office would like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, for City Council, would like to make a clarity. Council would go on record in support. Okay, I have no raised hands. May I have a motion, please? To approve with uh, BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And is it the usual takeout language? And for, this, uh, for this applicant only? Yep. Takeout language and this applicant only. Um, so, um, um, Ms. Spinato, uh, are you comfortable with those? Uh, yes. Okay. Those amendments are fine. Um, there's a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? M motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, 
Calling the next case, calling DOA 126 9408, 1256 to 1262 River Street. This is a change of art from pharmacy to function hall without alcohol. The violations, Article 69, Section 8. The use is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small, business address of 51 Dobson Road. Madam Chair, we're here today seeking relief to change the legal occupancy of the building um, from a pharmacy to a function hall. Um, the zoning subdistrict is the neighborhood shopping district, and our violation is that the use proposed is a conditional use. We're seeking a conditional use permit. Can you tell us more about this function hall? What are the hours of operation? What's the capacity? Uh, who, who is going to be running it? Yeah. So the capacity is uh, 224 patrons. Um, the approximate square foot of the function hall is approximately 2,770 square feet. And my clients and we're proposing to do um, wedding receptions, graduation parties, things of that nature. Robert Tomby and Vincent Bulega, who are the proprietors, are also on the call. I don't know, Jessica, if you could um, <coughs> unmute um, them. So I, I'm, I'm just curious. So it's going to be wedding receptions, etc., without alcohol? That's correct. And so what we're proposing, Madam Chair, it will be that um, people leasing the space will have to go through the City of Boston's licensing board to get one-day event uh, entertainment events and licenses um, to, in order to have functions that will contain alcohol at the at the site. I see. So that's your walk around. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, a license, okay. Is that what the name's there? Uh, um, so, uh, let's see what else. Um, where is parking proposed to be uh, accommodated? There are, there's a municipal lot across the street and then on street parking. There is no off street parking as this is a part of um, a bunch of businesses that are on River Street. Okay, and will there be any cooking on site? No, ma'am. No, no food preparation, anything on site. No. Okay, and is this going to be handicapped accessible? Uh, I believe it is. Again, it is. Okay. Okay. Um, how are the plans, um, uh, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are fine it, you know it looks pretty straightforward it does appear to be accessible um doesn't is there any exterior changes to this it looks like not but just want to make sure um no there's no no exterior changes okay um no questions um pretty straightforward in terms of the plans any questions from the board does the applicant have an experience running a function hall I'll, Robert or Vincent, can you answer that? Because they're on the call as well. Yes, I, I would take that question. Uh, my name is Robert Tambi, for the record. Myself and Vincent Bolega uh, acquired this place to add to the existing business we have here on River Street. We're very friendly in the community. Yes, I uh, personally have an experience running a function hall, not in this state, but out of state, Massachusetts. But we are people of very good character, and this this is something that we we we, we, we hope to hire an event manager because I'm a physical therapist. I will be in time and again. Uh, we we uh, just for a point of correction, uh, lawyer's small set is two thousand square feet. It's actually four thousand two hundred. I'm looking here at the site plan and the the lease. And uh, to answer one other question, which I think. Uh, the Madam Chair asked, but we both missed it, is that uh, the lease indicate that is the functions are only evenings and weekends. Uh, so uh, that that idea of parking is actually swallowed by our schedule. And, um, and um, let's just ask you one of the questions. Um, the the thing is, if there's if there's an issue. At, at any one of these events, who does somebody contact? 
Uh, because because it sounds like you're trying to that you know the idea of hiring an event person kind no. of removes it from you. Let, let me clarify that aspect. Either myself or Vincent Bulega, who are the owners or who are the managers, will one of us will be on site at all times when there's a function. Uh, and, even uh, even if we are off site for a few minutes. We have a closed circuit security camera inside and surrounding the building that we can monitor from our phone or from any computer uh, anywhere. Yes, but we will be actively involved in the management of the place, but we need somebody with that, with those social skills that can uh, talk to people and get people of good character to hold events. And the other, I have two other questions, um, music. Uh, generally, when we see function halls or bars or anything like that, there's a concern about keeping music volume down or and, and putting it off at a certain time and security so that should there be any disruptions, um, you know, there's some, some man, somebody there to deal with those. Yes, ma'am. Uh, to that, we, we have a plan in place. Uh, the first is that... Uh, the place was initially wired such that we, we can control the volume of the music that those secular and those computers are placed in. Then uh, number two, uh, it is also soundproof. Number three, we don't allow uh, outside speakers to be brought in, like some of those speakers that they play at Fenway is on our standard contract form. You come in with your music equipment and use our speakers, which are low to moderate frequencies. That will not disturb the neighbors. And actually, there's no neighbor around there at night. This is a typical CBD, Central Business District area. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody um, to speak here in support or in opposition? Morning, Madam Chair, or excuse me, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services and the applicants, Robert and Vincent, um, for this proposal completed the community process. They notified all the butters, um, mailing and distributing flyers um, for the community meeting that I hosted that was held on March 24th. Um, at this community meeting, uh, High Park Main Streets was present um, some of butters that were present at the community meeting verbally gave um, support for this project. In addition, we have letters of support that have been sent to the board. Um, just speaking on Robert and Vincent as business owners, as they also run the, um, they have a therapy, physical um, therapy shop. yeah, physical therapy shop that's a few doors down. Um, so they were speaking on the character of them and just wanted to give support. Um, at this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Danielle, was there any conversation about hours of operation, whether it was midnight or one or, or anything like that? Um, there was questions around the concern of parking in that schedule. And when those questions were brought up, Robert and Vincent um, explained that they have parking in the back where the municipal lot is, um, as well as since this is the business commercial district area, um, there are several spaces uh, for parking in the area as well. Um, there were not concerns from any abutters in terms of um, loud noise or music or, or how that would impact. Um, from that end. Okay. I'm sorry, I do have a raised hand here. Uh, DJ Charlie? One second. I sent a request on you. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Charles Williams, um, also known as uh, DJ Charlie B. Um, former Boston resident, I am uh, reside at 115 Leon Court in Hanson, Mass. Um, I am in support of this um, space. Um, 
I am a, I work in the High Park area. I have family, relatives, and many clients. <clears throat> uh, Robert and Vincent, as many have mentioned, also um, own the physical therapy, um, which is next door. Um, and this thank space you, will be thank good. You, thank you, thank you, sir. Um, um, yeah, go ahead, thank you. Uh, hello, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, my name is Izzy Slater, and I'm here on behalf of City Councilor at Large, Reese V. Um Our office would like to go on record in support of the project. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, Councilor? Um, yes. Okay, I have a couple of questions for you. So, so for this, for this place to operate without alcohol, they do not need a review by the licensing board, right? That is correct. So only with alcohol would they go to the licensing board, uh, which would then determine hours of, of operation and what time a facility would close. Uh, I believe that is correct. Okay. So, um, okay. So this is a conditional use. And I'm trying to figure out what the conditions might be, uh, but may I have um, a motion? Because it looks like it um, is, of course, um, signage to this applicant only and some form of control on closing hours. Is it a 1 a.m. closing or a midnight closing? Um, so those, and, and please, Ms. Ambassador, if you could mute everybody so the board can kind of talk this through. Um, any, any ideas? Um, how about, well, the, the other things you mentioned are, are clear. The, the only question is the closing time. How about midnight? during the week and 1 a.m. on the weekend. Okay. And that's, 1 a.m. weekend. Does that seem reasonable? Would, would we put any kind of, like, they come back to us in a year just to see how things are going? I, I don't you know. know if we, I'm, I'm keen on that. Um, yes. You know, so um, what do we want to say a year? Yeah, you know, a year. So okay. I can, I'll make a motion if, if you'd like. Sure. Uh, is that somebody else? No, I was just gonna. I was just gonna request a two-year sunset clause, if possible. No, we'd like to see, um, uh, uh, Council. We'd like to see them um, before then, just to see if there are any red flag issues that we should just be clear about. Well, will okay. it take time yeah, to? Is, is there going to be time to build out the space before well, it's actually well, operational? So we can do a year from occupancy. Yeah. yeah, Let's just make sure we do a year from occupancy because we okay. agreed to that before. Okay. I'll try to make a motion. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve um, uh, with a BPA uh, review for signage um, and then uh, for hours of operation, close at 12 a.m. Uh, during the week and then 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday nights and Sunday nights? I don't know if that's a sun oh, weekday or not. Um, with a one year. Uh, uh, sunset clause or return to this board clause for um, just review of the previous year's operations. And to this applicant only? And this applicant only, yes, I wrote that. One year from, as Joe said, from... Oh, from the certificate of occupancy, yes. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Okay, Madam Chair, members of the board, thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Calling the last case for 1030. Uh, Calling DOA 128 9077 4160 to 4164 Washington Street. This is a wreck 9,400 square feet, four story basement building with six residential units on floors two, three, and four, two core and shell commercial units, basement and ground floor, with parking for four vehicles on the ground level. Violations Article 67, Section 33. Traffic vis visibility across the corner is insufficient. Article 67, Section 29, specific design review, the street wall continuity on Bexley Road. Article 67, Section 32, off-street parking is insufficient. 
Article 67, Section 12, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 67, Section 12, the building height is, is excessive in stories. And Article 67, Section 12, the quality ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, Attorney Matt Fitzgerald from DLA Piper, 33 R Street in Boston. Um, here on behalf of Juan Chavez, the applicant, who is the owner of 4160 to 4164 Washington Street in Rosendale, also the longtime proprietor of the auto body shop that exists at the location currently. Uh, Mr. Chavez is uh, proposing at this location to demolish the existing one to two story um, uh, auto body structure and to construct in its place a four story mixed use building consisting of six residential units on floors two through four, two commercial units on the ground floor facing Washington Street, and four off-street parking spaces at the rear of the building to be accessed from Bexley Road. For a total of, uh, for a total of ground, uh, gross floor area, excuse me, approximately 9,232 square feet. The lot area is approximately 3,150 square feet. The commercial units uh, will each measure about 1,000 square feet, consisting of 470 square feet in the basement, which will be used for storage purposes only. And on the first level, the commercial units will measure approximately 533 square feet. Each of the residential units on floors two through four will measure um, approximately 1,051 square feet. It will consist of three bedrooms and two bathrooms each. Um, it's a neighborhood shopping subdistrict uh, within the Rosendale Neighborhood District. Um, as, the, as the Secretary has um, uh, just, just pointed out, we are seeking relief for excessive FAR. Um, the required FAR under the code is 1.0. We're proposing 2.96. Uh, the required height is three stories of 35 feet. We are proposing four stories and approximately 37 feet, eight and a half inches. Um, we're seeking relief also for insufficient parking. Um, in the neighborhood shopping district, two uh, parking spaces are required per dwelling unit, as well as two parking spaces for 1,000 square feet of gross floor area of office or retail space. So for this project, it would be a requirement of 16 parking spaces. We are proposing four. And the final two violations, as the, as the secretary pointed out, were the, is uh, the traffic visibility across the corner, the corner of Bexley and Washington Street, and street wall continuity along Bexley Road. As we're reconstructing the wall on Bexley Road, and it's not going to be coextensive with the structures along Bexley Road. Um, as you might recall, <clears throat> this Mr. Chavez appeared before this board last year. Um, I believe in July, July of 2021, with a similar project. He was proposing a four-story project similar to today with two commercial units in one residential unit on the ground floor, um, uh, six res residential units on floors two through four, so a total of seven residential units as opposed to six, which he's proposing today. Um, he was not proposing, and, and I'm sorry, he was also proposing a shared roof deck without any parking. So no parking was being proposed at that time. Um, as far as design is concerned, last year he was proposing a double stair tower um, for access to the roof deck. So, so Councillor, um, can I, um, whoever's running the screen, and, and I apologize, can you go back to the very beginning? Because it looks like there are two lots, are these lots going to be combined or are they already combined? It is just one lot, Madam Chair. Um, it's a one, it's a 3,150 square foot lot. It's just one lot. So it's a 3,150 square foot lot. Let's, I just That's want to, just cause if I look, stop right here, please. So, so there's 9,000. So the building is 9,300 and the entire lot is 3,150? That's correct. Okay. Um, and is, and um, let me ask you, so there's no roof deck. Is this an elevator building? It is, uh, Madam Chair. We, uh, we are proposing an elevator to run from the, the basement to the roof. Okay. So, you know, this is marginally better than the last proposal. But um, tell us what kind of thought process, because I know he, um, um, Mr. Chavez has responded to the parking concerns, because I know 
that was raised and this continues to be raised, it sounds like, from all the letters that we've gotten, um, we've gotten as a board about this project, that parking continues to be an issue um, and competition for parking at, at, the, um, at the street. Did the applicant think about uh, eliminating those commercial units? Um, Madam Chair, that, that was considered. However, the business community has voiced um, you know, support for the commercial units. Um, yeah, as, as you know, that's on the sort of the, that's right sort of in the, in the Rosendale Square business district or on the outskirts of it, I should say. So, um, you know, dating back to when Mr. Chavez was proposing um, a project last year, he met with the business community who voiced concern about there not originally not being um, proposed commercial spaces. Um, so, in, in response to the business community's concerns, he had agreed to include two commercial spaces. And I think, frankly, Madam Chair, I think that is also consistent with the neighborhood shopping and in sort of neighborhood business subdistrict zoning where you have, I think it's fairly consistent, where you have commercial uses on the ground floor with residential, you know, on the second floor and above. Okay, so, so, let, me, yeah, so let me ask you then the next question is that this is just a 3,000 square foot lot. The FAR that's required is one, and you're um, pushing it up close to three. Um, can you tell us how that's contextual then? Um, yeah, Madam Chair, I think it is, I think, I mean, as you pointed out, it's a small lot. You know, that, that is the reason for these violations. I mean, we have some serious lot constrictions here, which is the reason why I think that, you know, we're only able to support four parking spaces, for example. But I think that if you look at that corridor between Rosendale Square and Forest Hills, I think that you have many buildings like this that are, that, that are you know, sort of, have similar densities and, and I think you know and I and I have heard this board very recently in speaking on projects in this area and specifically in this corridor has stated that this corridor can support more density I, I have heard this board say that and so I think and I think the reason why this you know the the, the close to 3.0 FAR appears a lot worse than it is it's, it's because it is you know it is a small lot but that being said I think it's it's, it's very consistent with recently approved projects, with projects that are, are in the area today, and you know projects that are sort of in the pipeline and pending that will likely appear before this board very soon. So, well, I certainly appreciate that you know a 1.0 requirement, and we're we're you know and we're proposing 2.96. I can certainly appreciate the concern of the board. I think that's you know it's it's a product of of being on on a small lot. But that being said, I, I think it's very. I think it's entirely consistent with what you're seeing in this area, and especially in that corridor between Forest Hills and Rosendale Square. How are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, plans are good. Um, proposal, as you see it, there's no, nothing, nothing hiding in here, so it's it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, some background information, the property owner has included more parking with the project this time around and has removed the shared roof deck after concerns were expressed from the community. Um, the owner has also had two environmental assessments, saying there's no contamination. It's in the process of securing these new assessments for documentation. Uh, we still have heard concerns from the neighborhood uh, regarding um, changes what they feel would be to the character of the neighborhood due to the design of the building um, the density as well as competition for parking which you've heard earlier um, especially regarding those commercial units on the ground floor potentially impacting um, parking with the loading loading zones and uh, other vehicles Not utilizing them uh, we received 13 letters of opposition this morning uh, from local business leaders and also received two letters of support as well with that we defer back to the board thank you um, some clarification, um, you received opposition from business owners? Correct, Madam Chair. And did they state what their opposition is based on? Uh, yes. Uh, so the things that stuck out, some concerns about sight lines with the building uh, potentially impacting safety where it interjects with the corner. 
um, concerns about the character of the neighborhood, the bu building not fitting in with the existing architecture and density. Thank you. Miss okay. um, Ambassador, anybody else? Yep, um, Councilman Mejia, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, CPA. Um, this is Council at Large, Julia Mejia. I believe that I also see uh, Jordan uh, Frias, who is the Chief of Staff for Councilor Arroyo's office. So he is the District Councilor, um, but I'm here as an at-large Councilor um, to uh, state and go on the record in my support of this particular project. I do know that um, the, the folks who, are, who have been working on it um, this is not their first time in, in front of you and in front of the community, and they've done their dual diligence to not only hear, um, but to also respond to the needs of the community and um, and adjust their plans accordingly. So I'm here to offer my strong support on behalf of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Jordan, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jordan Frias here from Council of Ricardo Royals office. We'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jordan. Madam Chair, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Joe. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council Lodge, Michael Flaherty, Council Bill Redhead in support. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have letters of support. We also have letters of opposition as well. Okay. I do have a raised hand by Judith. Can you state your name and address for the record, please? My name is Judy Coomer. I am um, at uh, 117 Florence Street, um, a block away. And uh, Madam Chair, the board. Uh, I have points of concern and I'm talking against the proposal. The first is about density. The side street, Bexley, has two-story homes. The main street, Washington Street, has single-story uh, commercial buildings and at four stories this proposed building would tower over the others in the area by at least two stories. I'm concerned that uh, um, approval would set a precedent for too tall development on Washington Street, which would make it feel like a canyon. And one of the reasons that I moved to the, to the neighborhood was because of the low density. Um, I would be OK, by the way, if they scaled it back to three stories. Um, my second concern is that if when they come back with a revised proposal or if this does get approved, um, this stands at the corner of Bexley Road, which is one of only two access roads into the neighborhood. Um, it's a major cut through, and I'm concerned that when the owners will come back with a revised plan or this gets approved, that construction will make passage difficult on Bexley. Um, so if there's some proposal, some amendment that could be um, acknowledging um, the needs for, for traffic to be able to pass easily, I would be grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Milagros, go ahead. Uh, hi, my name is Milagros Marte, and a radio host producer, also resident in Teddy Grew Road in uh, uh, Roslindale, and I'm here to support Mr. Uh, Chavez. I think uh, uh, that construction will be very good for the community, and I strongly support him. Thank you. And Lori. Uh, okay. yeah. no, My name is Lori Radwin. Uh, I live at 49 Augustus. And you should have tens of letters in opposition from Rosendale Square business owners, employees, and shoppers. The insufficient parking spaces in this building matter. There are not enough parking spaces in the squares described in a recent Boston Transportation Department Rosendale Square parking study. The study explains that the streets around 4160 to 64 Washington Street could serve as parking for Rosendale Square small business customers. And uh, along these lines in your letters, you'll see that small business owners, staff, and customers describe a lack of parking as negatively affecting uh, their ability for customers to shop and access services. And as you noted, in essence, if the proposed project is approved with its parking space violations, condominium orders would be in competition with business customers for space, and this is hardly fair. The appellant can provide more spaces when the uh, development is built, and small business owners cannot create their own parking. Thank you very much. Thanks. No additional raise hands. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Um, just just to point out, I should have I should have included this with my presentation, but along Bexley Road, just for the board's consideration, um, where there is currently an extensive curb cut to allow for the the double sort of garage doors, 
for access and egress into the into the auto repair shop, that that is going to be substantially replaced by a curb, which will allow for an additional two to three parking spaces in that area for the residents of the community. I think second of all, I think it's important to point out that um, this certainly is, I, I think, by definition, a transit oriented development. I mean, it's serviced by multiple bus lines from Forest Hills, Points West, and it's about less than a quarter of a mile from the Rosendale Village commuter rail stop. We fully expect that the residents of this building aren't all going to own a vehicle. Um, and then just as a sort of caveat, this, you know, especially in response to this, to the last caller, you know, as you know, and I know Madam Chair, you are as a resident of Rosendale, you know the area well, you know, this, this is on sort of the very outskirts of the sort of main business district. I have personally gone to visit Juan at his building a dozen times and have actually never had any issues parking in that area. There's always been plenty at that, in the square, very difficult during the day, regular business hours, absolutely. I, I've gone at all times of day, out where Juan is towards Healy Field and heading out towards Forest Hills and that, it, I've, I've never had an issue parking around Juan's building. Um, so just, just for, for what that's worth, Madam Chair, I just think that in that specific section of, of sort of the outskirts of the business district, it's a little bit different than the main business area. Okay, so um, thank you. Um, Ms. Ambassador, we've got everybody. Um, as a Rosendale resident, I do feel that Mr. Mr. Chavez is heading in the right direction. However, I do think that it's still it's still dense given the uh, fact that it is proposed as three times um, the FAR that's required. Um, and the height, I mean, the um, Bexley Road is two and a half, maybe some three story, but mostly two and a half. And it's true that um, this proposal will eliminate the extra wide curb cut. Um, I'm a frequent, um, visitor to that part of the neighborhood and um, it is true but however for distance from the corner that will not increase truly increase the number of spaces and oftentimes you know with business districts with all these developments the the businesses get choked by the lack of parking because People then just throw up their hands and say that they will go to another business district or elsewhere where they can do this. The other thing I think that works against this project um, as proposed, because I do think uh, less density is possible, is that the uh, morning dedicated bus lane eliminates parking um, along that uh, Washington Street corridor which just um, handicaps resident, handicap residents um, in the building. Um, so anyway, um, given that, um, yeah. may I have, may, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, um, there, this is a conversation with the board, so okay. if you could please hold. Um, and may I have a motion please from the board? Um, I'll make a motion to approve a BPD design review. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm going to put my name in because I do think that this is headed in the right direction. However, it is going to have a negative impact on this part of Rosendale. Motion carries. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, board members. Have a great day. On the first case for rediscussion, because BOA 126-8636-167 Maverick Street. This is erect a new residential four-story building with 11 units, roof decks, and four rear parking spaces. The violation of Article 53, Section 8, the use is forbidden. Article 2017-5, this is in East Boston iPod. Article 32, Section 4, this is G-Card applicability. Article 53, Section 56, off-street parking and loading. Article 53, Section 52, Roof Structure Restrictions. Article 53, Section 9, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 53, Section 9, the building has excessive in stories. Article 53, Section 9, the building has excessive in feet. Article 53, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 53, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. 
and Article 53, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Jeff Drago with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Uh, here on behalf of the applicant, and I also have uh, Eric Zacherson from Context Design, who's the architect uh, on the proposal. Uh, in this rendering that you're looking now, it's the building proposed to the very right of this block. Um, the proposal is to raise the existing commercial structure uh, and to erect a new building with 11 residential units and four parking spaces in the rear. Uh, this project will have an affordability component uh, of a two bedroom unit on site. Um, our lot size is 4,500 square feet. This particular zoning subdistrict is a 3F2000. Uh, just to go over, uh, since I see we are on the plans, the layout, uh, in the basement, there will be some utility and a utility room and a storage facility for the residents. Um, the housing will begin on the first floor, which will have three units, uh, two studios and one one bed. Uh, on the second floor, that'll house another three units, one studio, one one bed and one two bed units. Um, the third floor will house the three additional units, one studio, one one bed and one two bed. And then we have a recessed fourth floor uh, that is pulled in on the front seven foot two inches, I'm sorry, uh, eight feet in the front and seven foot two inches in the rear. Um, and that will house uh, four, uh, I'm sorry, two units, two two bed uh, units, one with a front deck and one with a rear deck. Uh, on our roof, we have two exclusive roof decks uh, just for units uh, 10 and 11. Those will be accessed through hatch only. Um, just to go over the violations that were mentioned, this is a 3F district, uh, although it does have MFR all around it, we are proposing 11 units, so a use variance. Uh, we would need additional lot area uh, variance. Uh, FAR, we're proposing 2.3, 1.0 is what's allowed. Our height is, uh, as proposed, is four stories at 44 feet, six inches. What's allowed is three stories and 35 feet. Uh, for open space, we have 836 square feet total. Uh, 300 square feet per unit is required. Uh, front yard is five. We are modal, so we're zero, matching the buildings to the left of us. Um, our uh, rear yard, we're close at 26 feet, seven inches. It varies slightly, 22 feet, nine to 26, seven. And what's required is 30. Um, parking is two per dwelling units. We do have four in the rear. Just to point out, we are 500 feet walking distance to Maverick T Station. Well, I can answer any questions that the board may have. Christian, are you on? Good afternoon, members of the board, Christian Simonelli, Boston Browner Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. We have those letters as well, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Councilor, what is the zoning subdistrict here? It is a 3F2000, Madam Chair. Okay, and the lot size is what? 4,500 square feet. And you're still, and you're proposing 11 units, right? We are 11 units, but that, and that includes an affordable you know, unit, sorry, a two bedroom unit um, and a contribution to the IDP fund. Okay, so this is, would say that three, six, nine, it's four times, almost four times the number of units that would be allowed as of right. Um, on this double. because, because um, uh, no it actually for 3,000 two, two, um, 2,000 square feet no it's it's actually almost three times um, how are the plans uh, Mr. Robinson uh, plans are good uh, I, I think we, we fully understand what's being proposed here in terms of its size in scale, I mean, it does have a setback at the fourth floor and the three story is more consistent with the main street, but um, it is up against the uh, greenway uh, bike bike path. Um, so it doesn't have an abutting neighbor to the left. However, it is encroaching in on, I think on the right hand side, 
I just wanted to make sure. So, sure. It looks like you're introducing a, a window well adjacent to some existing windows on the adjacent building, but you don't have any windows in that window well, right? That's just a relief for their their windows. Okay. That's correct. Yes, right. that's correct. And if you go up to the first picture, Mr. Robinson, the rendering, yeah. I know you had mentioned just because you had mentioned context, if we go to the okay. rendering, there was a four story building approved just two down from us by the board. So we're, we're in line exactly with the height of that building. Um, across the street from us is the Greenway Apartments, which is four stories. And then behind us is the Victory Gardens, which is four stories. So I do look in your right. To the left of us is three, but two yeah. down. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. I'm so on the ZB meeting. Yeah. No further um, question. What, what were they saying about any, a point? Any other questions from the board? Can you, can you speak to oh, the yeah, landscaping plan life. since you're right abutting the... Sorry, easy. sorry, um, um, Ms. Bonato, can everybody mute themselves so that this board can understand what's going on? Uh, Ms. Bonato, please go ahead. Yes, I'm wondering about the landscaping plan given that we're abutting the East Boston Greenway and the bike paths. Sure, so what we did is we have met extensively um, to address parks questions, concerns, as well as the Greenway group. So we, right next to us is a very large sloping hill, a grade change that goes to the Greenway. So we can't access that by foot. But what we have done is we hired Verdant, Verdant Landscape to put a full landscape plan together. And what they're going to do is, because there's already landscape there, but to remove invasive, invasive species and replace that with new sustainable species, as well as making a large donation to redo as the Greenway sees fit that whole landscape along the side. Um, we also, because drainage along the Greenway has been a major concern in the area, we have put together a recharge system that goes above and beyond what's even required from water and sewer to help, because this will significantly help with this recharge system with drainage along the Greenway as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, the roof structure restrictions, uh, tell us about the roof deck. So we have two exclusive roof deck, uh, roof decks, Madam Chair, one in the rear, one in the front. Um, and so those are exclusive to those top units. One is 280 square feet, one is 425 square feet, um, and they're accessible only by hatch. Okay. And how will loading actually occur in this building? So the access point, so one of the unique things that none of the other buildings over here have is we have easement rights in the back. And if we go down to the very last page of, of this presentation, there is an easement plan. It's 18 feet wide. And so um, it, it allows us vehicular access. So if something did need, we do have our parking access that way. And in terms of pickup, you see that bottom sort of gray slashed area. Um, we do have the rights to traverse down there if we need to unload or, or load quickly, obviously. So. Um, and is that also the access to the four parking? It is for the four parking, and it also is a shared easement with the Victory Garden apartment complex, which is at the left of us. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Yes, anybody here? Uh, Bob, did, did you have a statement? Uh, yes, Madam Chair and members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTD. Um, I was just wondering if they could uh, have a consideration for uh, mitigation for the Mary Ellen Welch Greenway because a lot of folks are very concerned that um, it's going to be like walking down the hallway, especially when you consider the proposed development for the East Boston Health Center uh, project. And um, I just was wondering about the size of the parking spaces. I can't, I can't make it out. It, they're, yeah, they are full spaces, Bob, eight and a half by 20. And we did commit a monetary number directly with them. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into too much of the detail, but we do have an agreement with uh, with the Greenway folks for, okay. for donation. Okay. Um, any anything else? Okay. Um, is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Service. 
the applicant received support from the Gove uh, Street Association, and many changes were made based on comments from the community. They reduced the number of units from 20 to 11, five to four stories, and top floor has been pushed back if they are an increased unit sizes. Uh, the applicant also worked diligently with the Greenway uh, to design a landscape connected with the project. Our office received 12 letters of support for this project. And at this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have those letters. The mayor's office spoke up. Okay. And uh, I do have a few hands. I'll start with Janet. Can you state your name and address for the record? Yes. Um, good afternoon. My name is Janet Knott, and I live at 63A Maverick Square in East Boston. My home is near the Mary Ellen Welsh Greenway, and I would like to say that this is a beautiful space and a key element to the health and wellness for me, my neighbors, and the community. I believe city real estate will be good neighbors to the Greenway as well, adding more plants and trees to the area that abuts the project and create, will create more lush landscape for all residents to enjoy. Thank you. And Christina, go ahead. Can you state your name and address for the record? Christina Murphy, 153 Everett Street. Um, I support this project because I think it will bring much needed housing to the neighborhood, and I really like that it has an affordable aspect to it. Okay, thank you. And Vinny, can you state your name and address for the record, please? How you doing? Uh, my name is Vinny Plano, and I live at 113 College Street, and I do support the project. <clears throat> and appreciate the uh, affordability aspect as well that they have going in. Thank you. Thank I you. have no additional no waste hands. Um, and just for clarification again, uh, at what what AMI is the affordable unit supposed to be at? 70%, Madam Chair. 70%? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's one unit, right? Correct, plus a payment uh, to the IDP fund as well. Okay. Okay, so given that information, may I have a motion, please? Uh, motion, to review, uh, motion to approve a BPDA design review. Um, Is there a second? I'll second. second that, Eric. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank Madam you. Chair, Tom. Um, is it possible that we can have the BPDA identify that the affordable units uh, through the design review process? Uh, and and we put that in the decision? Yeah, that's a proviso or part of the BPDA, like the things that they have to look at. The I, I thought that Jeff had already identified one, but I'll leave it up to him. I, I thought is, he identified it, it as a two bedroom. It is, but that, you know, it is a two okay. bedroom. All right. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling VOA 123 157 West Springfield Street. This is a renovate and extend existing building and change legal office from a church to nine dwelling units. The violation of Article 9, Section, section 01, reconstruction and extension of a non-conforming building. Article 32, Section 32-4, groundwater. This is in the G-Card. Article 64, Section 34, Restricted Roof Structure Regulations. Article 64, Section 9, the floor day ratio is excessive. Article 64, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 64, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chairwoman, this is Eric Robinson. I'll be recusing myself from this case. Okay, so this is a six member, um, a six member board. Um, so the applicant will need five members in support. Um, and so you have two choices to go ahead or to recuse until uh, or to defer until we have a full board. Madam Chair, for the applicant, George Morancy, I'm an attorney with Dave's business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston, and we uh, choose to proceed with the six member board. Okay, excellent. So, um, and Mr. Ehrlich, you've had a chance to look at the plans. I have. Okay, so please go ahead, Mr. Moranzi. Madam Chair, as a preliminary matter, uh, there is a GCOD citation. I don't know if the Chair wishes to take GCOD first. Yes, um, uh, go ahead, Christian. Madam Chair, Member of the Board, Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both letters from the applicant. Madam Chair, we have the letters as well. 
Thank you. Madam Chair, this is an application for the adaptive residential reuse of the building uh, at 157 West Springfield Street, uh, which was for over 30, 130 years home to the Ebenezer Baptist Church. The last service of the church was held in early 2020. Unfortunately, as the cost of maintaining the aging structure uh, grew over the years, and since now only about 20% of the congregants actually live in the neighborhood with limited parking available in the area, a difficult decision to relocate was made by the church out of necessity. Uh, I have a, a very brief presentation on zoning. Uh, we have Michael Delafay from Rode Architects, who will actually present the architectural plans. A great deal of care and skill have gone into those plans. I would not want to do a disservice uh, by presenting them myself. Um, the priority of church leadership so, was to so, so, Mr. Morenzi, do you mind if we just flip this so that we can understand exactly what is being proposed, the unit sizes, etc., and then we'd be happy to backtrack to uh, your citation of uh, what's proposed. Uh, absolutely. I, I, okay, I, will, I will allow uh, Michael Delafay to proceed, and then when Michael is concluded, if the board has any questions for him, uh, if not, I will then uh, do a presentation on zoning. Michael? Okay, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, George. Uh, Michael Delafay, Brody Architects, uh, 535 Albany Street, Boston. I'm joined here with Reverend Thompson from the Ebenezer Baptist Church in case any of the board members have questions for him. Um, we are proposing nine units, um, and they are as follows. Uh, two one-bedroom flats at 650, uh, and one of those units is a voluntary IDP unit. Uh, we have one one-bedroom flat at 800. We have two two-bedroom flats at 1500, and we have three three-bedroom duplexes at 18, square feet uh, and then there's one three bedroom triplex at 2500 uh, I will also mention there's a little bit of inefficiency there due to staircases in the triplex uh, we're proposing nine parking spaces one for each unit and I'll take you through that in just a moment um, Madam Ambassador can you go to page three please which is where we are um, you'll see there on the right hand oh, up one there you go uh, you'll see on the right-hand side, uh, you'll see the nine parking spaces accessed through a small ramp on the right-hand side. Um, and then on the left-hand plan, you'll see the first floor of residential. Uh, in the lower, uh, so the southeast corner of that plan, uh, you'll see the residential lobby. This is at grade, um, and the lobby is here in order to provide handicap access to the building. Um, on the right-hand side, left-hand side of that plan, uh, you'll see three, uh, three stoops. So our plan is to keep those three stoops completely intact, uh, and this is for uh, landmark reasons. Uh, we feel that it's important to maintain the validity of the uh, existing structure. Um, so on that plan, you'll also see that there is uh, a two-bedroom unit on the lower half of the plan uh, that has access uh, through one of through a stoop, and it also has handicap access uh, via a centralized corridor. Uh, in the upper right hand, uh, excuse me, upper left hand corner, uh, northwest, uh, there is the another uh, access to a unit, uh, and this is the triplex. So this will get uh, bring that person up into up into their unit. Uh, in the center stoop is being uh, utilized as a second entrance to the building. So. Uh, any of the occupants within the building can come and go uh, through that uh, centralized uh, stair in the main stoop. Um, Madam Ambassador, can you go to the next page, please? Um, here, these two plans illustrate the uh, three duplex units and then the upper floor of the triplex. So the triplex is the, uh, in the northwest corner, uh, and that does have access to the street. Uh, you'll see that all four of the um, units here are have bedroom levels that is uh, below the brick within the existing church. Um, and then up above the uh, sort of eave line is uh, what we're calling the public floor. So this is the uh, living space. 
Um, and we've done this to bring light and air into those particular aspects of the unit. So the sleeping floors are more quiet and within the church. Um, and the uh, more public aspects of each unit is up above the uh, brick of the, of the church. Uh, and you'll see a great deal of stairs within there as well. And they all have elevator access. Um, Madam Ambassador, next, next page, please. Um, and then here you're seeing the final three units uh, the, on the uh, right plan, right hand side plan. Uh, you're seeing a one bedroom plus and then another one bedroom. Um, and then on the north side of the plan is a two bedroom. Um, and these all have uh, outdoor space as well. So um, terraces and uh, some views within these, uh, these dormers. Um, Madam Ambassador, can you take us to page uh, eight, please? So uh, let me just ask a quick question. Is sure. everything being done within the envelope of the building or is there any um, additions proposed well, or exterior modifications? There, the, uh, the brick shell of the structure will remain and the roof will be modified with a dormer-like addition on both sides. Do we have a view of, of that, that proposed design? We absolutely do. Madam Ambassador, can you go to uh, page 11 or 12? Um, one of these two is fine. Um, so this is the proposed addition. Uh, we are uh, maintaining the existing ridge height of the structure. Uh, we're now going above that. Um, and what we're proposing is basically pulling the roof up to form two large dormers that will house uh, the units. And um, if you wouldn't mind going to page 11, the one before this. This is another aspect of the design that we wanted to touch on. Um, so as you can see, we're completely revitalizing the existing uh, brick structure. We're going to be repainting. Um, and we're gonna be restoring the uh, front three doors. Um, these will be turned into glass so that uh, the occupants can actually have uh, visibility to the outside and gain access to their units off of the street. Um, this is really to bring awareness to the idea that uh, people are kind of coming and going uh, from here, that this is a residential building, which we feel is very important. Um, the stoops will be completely restored um, and as you can see in the front, um, we've had preliminary discussions with the Boston Landmarks Commission, um, and uh, they've uh, really suggested that we take note of the existing or the types of gardens that are within the South End. So uh, that is uh, what you see there in the front. Um, and actually, Madam Ambassador, if you can go to page nine. Up one more. Uh, and then this is an example of that uh, South End garden that is traditional in the area. So uh, our, our expectation is to revitalize the gardens in front of the church uh, and bring them up to the standards of the South End, along with restoring the stoops. Um, and then furthermore, uh, we feel that it's important to in, in some way uh, memorialize the Ebenezer Baptist Church and the significant history that's happened here. Um, and these are just some early ideas of what you okay, need. Um, hold on, hold on. I, I um, understand that one of our board members may need to leave early. And given the fact that we have a six member board, I'd like to move uh, now um, to um, any questions from the board. Is anybody here to speak in support or in opposition? Uh, Madam Chair, George Morancy, I don't know if we spoke about zoning. I'm sorry, I don't know if you want me to do that. Um, no. Um, you want me to do the plans? Well, yes, how are the plans? Um, the plans are very nice. They have done a very uh, nice design combination of, uh, of keeping the traditional elements and, and, add, and adding new elements. I, I, I have no issues whatsoever with the architectural design. The okay. only the only concern is, as always, that this is nine units. Okay, uh, Mr. Olick, sorry to cut you off, but uh, we um, are going to be losing a board member momentarily. And I just want to make sure that since we've gone through this whole process, 
we are a board member short that we have enough time to okay but in any case it's nine units so okay got it okay any um sorry anybody else to speak either in support or in opposition Hi, uh, yes. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board on this matter. The applicant has held numerous meetings on and off site, as well as an abutters meeting hosted by our office in October of 2021, and they've continued to communicate with the community since then. We've received seven letters of support, including one from the Harley Box Neighborhood Association and one letter of opposition from Chester Square Neighbors. Thank you. Madam Madam Chair, yeah, we have those letters. Oh, sorry. So go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Nick Bornstein from Rev Santiago's office. Uh, Rev Santiago shared a letter of support and wants to express his support for the project today. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have those letters that Mayor spoke of and Rep. Santiago. Okay, can we have uh, uh, Melicia and Carol Blair? Can you guys speak? Um, I, um, I'm I'm entirely in a quandary because I do want to give a do, good due process, but um, okay. So let's see. Let's let's just please everybody give us new information. Uh, yes. So this is Carol Blair, 222 Northampton Street, President of Chester Square Neighbors. I'm here to report that many meetings with the developer team. Three issues are un, that there are three issues unresolved. First, we don't need more luxury housing. Only a block away. Harriet Tubman House uh, site has, is providing 66 units with needed parking, but workforce housing is in short supply and would be welcome. Second, this building has always been a meeting place. We've lost too many churches and spaces to gather, including Tubman House. The new Ebenezer maybe could bring people together, perhaps by hosting historical exhibit, a community room, childcare, or flexible space for the Hurley's bilingual K-8 programs. The Ebenezer has always been a connector. The proposed design is a fortress. Here, where the South End and Roxbury meet on the margin of Mass and Cass, we need neighborly interactions. If the Ebenezer is to be residential, we need street side comings and goings, windows where people will look out, and engaging open space. Third, we believe this proud building, home to a church founded by former slaves, should inspire Hurley School students and all who pass by. A plaque on a structure that has become a pedestal for penthouses is not adequate to convey the Ebenezer's history of African American activism. I also want to speak as chair for Ruby Coleman, a longtime Ebenezer church member who lives next door. She was prepared to testify in December and February when the developer deferred, but cannot do so today. Night before last, she was with her brother when he passed. Ebenezer church baptized Miss Ruby's children. They were there on Sundays and came from the Hurley after school. Miss Ruby told us, the people who live there, they don't want to see us. They have their entrance way around the other side. As soon as they end there, they'll want us gone. With all this, we ask you to deny the appeal. Thank you for your attention. And if I may speak, my name is Melitza. I am one of the parents at the Hurley School. We have great concerns about the lack of community space as well. We also have great concerns about the construction that will take probably a long time. And as you saw in that last photo on slide 12, our school is right next door. The field is right there. The field took a long time to get renovated and now is in danger of getting dust and the children as well. Thank you. I would like to speak. Uh, my name is Brian Goki. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yes, hi, my name is Brian Goki. I'm co-president of the Hurley Blocks Neighborhood Association. Um, the Ebenezer Baptist Church and Reverend Thompson have been a, a fixture in our neighborhood for more than a century. Uh, they've been wonderful neighbors. So, and, so please get to tell us okay. exactly. Okay. Listen, I, as far as the, the church leadership enthusiastically supports this proposal, and so do I. And so do uh, the I, I submitted a letter with 12 names of, of neighbors um, in support of this proposal. It's a diverse list of names uh, on, from West Springfield Street, from Tremont Street, Worcester Street, and Chomet Avenue. And I think it's a wonderful proposal, and the, the church leadership supports it, and so do we. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Naomi? Hi, my name is Naomi Schlossberg. Um, my husband and I live at 88 Worcester Street, and our backyard fronts the alley shared by the church at 157 West Springfield. 
We would like to voice our full support of the proposed redevelopment, um, especially given the understanding that the congregation and the church want to relocate and a key part of their relocation is selling um, this building at 157 West Springfield. The proposed conversion into condos would be a great thing monetarily for the church and a great outcome for the neighborhood as we already have so few opportunities for additional housing. So we are full supporters. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Not okay, so no more, right, um, Ms. Ambassador? Uh, correct. Oh, okay. no, sorry. I'm just popped up. I don't. You want to uh, switch? Let's, let's hear, let Ms. Vida, please be fast. Um, you know what, Ms. Ambassador, we just need to um, close all comments. Can I, um, Mr. Uh, Counselor, um, Counselor, can you have any response to any of the comments that were made? Um, Madam Chair, George Morancy, very quickly, I realize time is uh, not an ally to us here. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich's comments uh, initially about a nine unit project, again, want to reiterate that there is an IDP unit. Uh, it, is a, uh, um, it is a 670 square foot one bedroom unit. It's been identified by the BBDA as unit two in the project. Uh, in terms of violations, uh, we have an FAR of 2.3. Well, I'm sorry, it's the, so it's the smallest unit, essentially? One of no, the no, units. no, there are, no, there, there are three one bedrooms. They're all okay. essentially the same. Uh, it's one of the three one bedrooms, uh, and it is the one okay. on the lower floor, which is accessible. Uh, as to the restricted roof structure violations, not a height violation. It has to do with changing the profile of the roof. Okay. There's a so cited usable on, open. Hold, hold on, Mr. Morancy. Uh, Ms. Ambassador, can everybody be muted? Um, may I have the board have a discussion uh, and then we can move to a motion? Um, I do want to point out there's no usable open space violation. I think that's also important. Okay, uh, Ms. Morency, we're going to have to defer this if, if everybody doesn't keep quiet, okay? So um, may I have uh, any conversation, any proposed motion? So in, in light of the fact that it's nine, but with an IDP, which I think is key, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve a PPDA design review. Mr. Ruggiero. Joe, I don't think we need to have it because it was uh, oh, it's in the uh, landmarks. Yeah, sorry. So strike that. Is there a second? Review. Yeah, I, based on uh, th that same uh, comment, I will second that motion. So, Madam Chair. All, all, those, all those in favor? Aye. Oh, aye. Any aye. opposed? Any opposed? Motion carried. Aye. Affordable units. I'm or, sorry. Madam Chair, can I suggest that the board include a proviso that the applicant identify the you know affordable yes, units? Yes, yes, the provi the provi with the with the proviso that it's unit number two as council specified. Okay. Yep. And the motion carries. So you're all set. Good luck. Thank you, Ms. Panado. We'll see you all when right, we see you. So. Okay. Thank you. Going to the last case. Oh. Calling the last case, calling VOA 120 55 Bolton Avenue. This is a renovation of an existing two family to a four family, one car garage along with the loft space above, which will be adjacent unit. The existing lower unit, one duplex, will be converted into two units. The violation Article 65, Section 8, dwelling unit located in the basement is forbidden. Article 65, Section 8, four dwelling unit use is in the zoning subdistrict is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the 48 ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, uh, my, name is, uh, my name is Timothy Sheehan. I'm the architect for the project. I'm representing uh, Kathleen McPherson and Gabrielle Jenkins and uh, Kathleen's husband, Matthew. So this has been through the board before. We've had a few deferrals. We've had to go back to ISD and redesign the project. So coming through now, what exists there now are it's a two unit building. It's a duplex over a duplex. Uh, there are, the bottom duplex currently has three bedrooms. Two are in, on the, are in the basement, one's upstairs. And then the upper unit uh, is just, is just uh, four bedrooms now. So, so Mr. Sheehan, let's back, back uh, what is the zoning district? This is, it's two family 6,000. Two family 6,000 and what is the lot area on this? 9,600 square feet. 9,600 square feet, and uh, you're still proposing for families? Yes. And uh, you're still provide, proposing the garage with loft space? 
Yeah, so the garage, yeah, it's going to be its own unit now. There'd be a garage with living space under it and a living floor above it. And tell us about the basement unit in the, the basement unit. Yeah. yeah, the existing basement unit, it's a full walkout at the back on the south side. Um, we're, in, we're increasing the window areas, so light and air requirements will be doubled. Uh, sills are at 30 inches. One of the bedrooms downstairs will be eliminated and turned into a living room. And we'll put a set of French doors in and make a window on the, on the west side bigger. So in that unit will be 677 square feet over the 610 the BPDA likes to see. What neighborhood is this and this is in Dorchester? Yeah, it's Bowdoin Ave, yes. It's just above, it's about 30 feet above Washington Street, just one block so off of Washington. I, I think I got to understand why we need a basement unit. Um, well, what's going on here? These are owner occupiers. So the three bedroom unit is hard to rent. And I looked at it, it's, it's just a perfect basement. You know, I know you don't like basement apartments, but it fully exposes on the back side. We've got plenty of Southwest light. We've got good ceiling height at 7-Eleven. Um, it, it just, it's just a basement because the way it sits in the hill, the front edge of it is buried. So, you know, we, we looked at it and it just makes more sense. It's easier than for the rent. They're, they're, the people on the, on the unit one and unit two currently going to work together on this. And this is the rest of their life. You know, this is the rest of their life house. So it makes them, makes it possible to do the rest of the renovations by adding these two, you know, basically adding the two units, one unit being the addition on the left and the other one being converting the existing basement duplex into two separate viable units. You know, one at 677 square feet with a full southern walkout exposed. And then the middle, you know, the, the ground floor entry, you know, the first floor entry will be, you know, a nice 870 square foot two bedroom unit. It just works better for, for my clients. And tell us about the addition. What's the addition? Uh, the addition is off the left side. It's 28 feet long by 19 feet, four inches wide. It's two stories high from the front. And if you look at the elevations, you know, if you, if you look at the elevations, I've been very careful about maintaining that Victorian style of the building and having the addition subservient to the main house. Um, and that would be for, you know, for the person who's in unit two now, who's on it, Gabe, that would be his unit. Um, and that's it, you know, and that's, it's, I, I, you know, I think it looks pretty good. I think it works with the architecture that's there and We've kept it as minimal as possible. It's only three floors because of the way the building, the way the site drops off down going towards Washington Street. And how's parking working? Because I noticed that that's not a violation. Yeah, I've got it right here. Basically, right we have there right now is an is a asphalt driveway with one car. So, and the curb cut is over wide. The curb cut's 14 feet plus. So my thought was to expand the driveway in the front and, and along with a, a spot in the garage, we'll have three spaces. Okay. So we provided for the two additional units and truthfully, you know, these clients, they're all together. So they'll, they'll make it work. You know, it's, okay. it's one grouping of people. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Robinson? Uh, the plans are good. Uh, I, I, I can't disagree. It, you know, the site does fall off. Uh, the lower level unit is, is decent. It's not, I don't think it's even a stretch. I think it does seem to sort of provide the space. I, I, you know, I have a little bit of the heartache of going from uh, two to four. Um, but I think in terms of the overall proposal, it's, it's, um, it's scaled pretty nicely. I, I don't think it's encroaching too closely on the adjacent left hand. I think it's left hand neighbor, a 10 foot six setback. So, um, uh, other than that, I, I think it's 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 a uh, fair proposal. I think from this site, so I agree with the site plan. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, just on the basement floor plan, are the bedrooms situated uh, towards the rear walkout, or where? How are they? Yeah, relevant? they're right on the rear walkout. So, the, I mean, the bedroom you'd have to, you know, yeah, yeah, it's just they're, they're on the southwest side, which is the back. Okay, so so they have plenty of light. Yes, yeah. it's it's pretty good. Or, or is it shadowed by the decks? It sh it sh yeah, it is under the deck, but the decks, you know, the way that deck is, it's up nine feet. You know, it's up nine feet off that ground level, just the way it works, because of the high floor to ceiling. So they'll get some light. Yeah, it's not perfect sunlight, but they'll get light. Okay. Is anybody here to speak either in support or in opposition of this proposal? 
Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Denise DeSantos from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Service. I would like to go on record and state that the applicant has met with Thea Butters twice in the association a few different times to present this and they have the abutters and neighborhood association support at this time we would like to defer to the board thank you mantra i have no additional raised hands um may i have a motion please madam chair madam chair yeah, yeah, hi, uh, Joe McEachern, City Council, Frank Baker's office. Um, we're actually in opposition to this project due to the fact that um, many of the abutters have contacted us and uh, they think the project is too dense. They have, huh? Okay. Um, I'm wondering if the, because I haven't seen very many comments to us from the abutters on this project. Okay, got, okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Sorry okay. about that. <laughs> may I have um, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the PPA design review. I'll, I'll second that motion, Eric. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the meeting is now technically adjourned. But if board members could stay on for a minute, that would be fantastic. Thank you for your time, everybody. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.